And welcome to Ranger Stadium, final game of the regular season. Smith Valley taking on the New Braunfels Unicorns, and with the win, the Rangers can claim the 27-6A title outright. On the Rangers Network, I'm Brain Freeman. Alongside me, Tony Brubaker here for you. On the Rangers Network, and Tony, last week, we saw a wild football game. The Rangers, a 40-37 win at overtime against the Judson Rockets. As a result, Smith Valley now playoff bound, but now a chance to check off another goal on their to-do list, and that's win the district title. Isn't that amazing what a, a week with a win can be like? Uh, I know people uh, all over the, the, the Rangers system have talked about that game all mm -hmm. week. And, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you're talking about a win that nobody – except for maybe Rangers fans would understand yeah. how big it was because nobody really knew how good Judson was other than they're really, really good. And the Rangers played a magnificent game and sets him up, like you said, for tonight in a district championship opportunity. Some believe that 27-6A is the toughest district in the state and against Smithson Valley, 48 minutes away from winning the title in the 27-6A district. Still more to come in our pregame coverage. We'll break down tonight's matchup and visit with Rangers head coach Larry Hill. This is Smith Valley Football on the Rangers Network. When you're ready for a break, hurry in to Chicken Express. Let us do all the cooking for you. We always offer high quality, affordable meals that the entire family will enjoy. Our chicken is never frozen and it's hand battered fresh so you can really taste the difference. You can expect fast and friendly service at Chicken Express, whether you dine in, drive through, or drive up. Hurry in and hurry back to Chicken Express. Tom Brady, that's a mic drop. This is football, and this is how it is. Let's just, let's just get right to it. Start your game day with game day morning. Football's first pregame show every Sunday. Watch NFL Network, GVTC Digital Cable Channel 579. GVTC, just plain smart. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium. As we said going into the break, 27-6A, the district is so tough. So tough, in fact, that a very good football team will not make the postseason, and that is the opponent tonight for Smith Valley, the New Braunfels Unicorns. Tony, the Unicorns come in 6-3 and three on the year. Impressive wins in non-district play, but a tough loss last week against Clemens has pushed New Braunfels out of the playoff picture. And that loss to Clemens really ended what was going to be a storybook-type season for Glenn Mangold in his third season, fourth season as the head coach. He had accomplished so much after that program had fallen off the map, if you will, in the toughest district mm -hmm. in the state. Yep. And he, he really got things going, and this was the year they were supposed to accomplish even more than they did last year when they got their first playoff berth. Let's go back to last week, Tony, for the Rangers. Again, the big win over the Jets and Rockets. What a performance by Levi, Levi Williams. Shook off three interceptions, threw for nearly 300 yards, three touchdowns, including the game winner to Trevon Merrick Woodard. And what a finish that was in overtime to – to watch Woodard catch the ball about two yards out and just break the tackle and go on in and shock everybody in the stadium that the Rangers had pulled it off. Mm -hmm. on, on the topic of big plays and passes thrown by Williams, the 90 officially, 98-yard strike to Mason Pierce at the time the game was tied in the third quarter. It felt like that was when the momentum shifted in, in favor of Smithson Valley. Yeah, they, you noticed some of it happening already, but that one kind of sealed it. Uh, Pierce catching the ball on a, on a, a skinny post type slant mm -hmm. and then just outran everybody. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fun that you have seniors like that that uh, uh, haven't been the guy until this year. And now the guy, Mason Pierce, has stepped up and has had a huge season for a guy that we didn't know if we could expect that from him. Now looking at the Unicorns, again they come in 6-3 and three on the year and their offense is led by senior dual threat quarterback Ryan Redding. Over 2,200 yards of total offense so far this season. Huge threat, Tony, with his legs. Well, just a dual threat. He can throw the ball, but more importantly, he runs the ball really well. Over seven yards a carry. He has 11 touchdowns rushing as well as 11 touchdowns throwing. He is a danger 
to opposing defenses. Speaking of a danger to opposing defenses, you think about the big targets in the passing game for New Braunfels. Got to start with the senior, Austin Schriever. He is something else. Uh, their leading guy in receptions, but they throw the ball everywhere. So many guys have receptions. Mm -hmm. So many guys have touchdowns. A guy that's second or third in receptions is the top touchdown getter, and they just like to throw the ball around. Again, it is New Braunfels, Smithson Valley for the Rangers, a 27-6-8 title outright on the line. Still to come in our pregame coverage, a chat with Rangers head coach Larry Hill. This is Smithson Valley football on the Rangers Network. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Comal Independent School District, HEB, GVTC, WIC Productions, Ferris Orthodontics, Summer Hill Dental, Smoky Moe's Barbecue, and Pizza Hut. I'm Jaime Buenteo, produce buyer for HEB. We work hard to find the freshest, best produce available. That's why we work with Texas growers to buy local as much as possible, over 100 million pounds annually. In fact, we sell more produce than any other store in Texas. Grapefruit, corn, blueberries, and tons more, all grown right here in our beautiful backyard and on their way to your store within 24 hours. This is the local Texas produce department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. And welcome back to Inside Rangers Football. Smith Valley taking on New Braunfels this Friday. The Unicorns come in 6-3, and three, although mathematically now out of the playoff race by virtue of a tough loss against Clemens at home this past Friday, 17-7. Coach, you've been in a district with the Braunfels for a number of years now. Going back to your start at Smith Valley back in the mid-90s, a lot of history with this Unicorn football program. How would you describe the history that you have with the Braunfels? Well, you know, some good, some bad. <laughs> You know, they, uh, they're always a formidable team. They have a great program, great tradition. Uh, in recent years, they've made tremendous strides under Coach Mangold. And you mentioned just going to barely finish out of the money this year mm -hmm. like some other good teams are. You know, had a tough game. The Clemens game could have put them in the other night and, you know, take the lead with five minutes to go. Look like they're going to win it in a game they clearly had a chance to win. And, you know, the kickoff return, you know, so that's kind of what – Kind of like our game, you know, one or two plays and we win as opposed to lose. In their case, one play and they lose as opposed to win. And, you know, probably any other league, they may be the district champion or, right. or a playoff team, but uh, we all know what it's like in this league. They'll be as good a team as we've played. We know what we're up against. Yeah, the Bravo's victims of a really stiff 27-6A district. When realignment comes up here in a couple of months, they'll definitely have their eyes on where they'll be moving forward. You look at this year's team again, winning record for the second year in a row, 6-3, and three, no matter what happens for them on Friday. And you look at the play of the offense in particular. It has been great throughout the season. 40 mm -hmm. points or more, six times, 60 or more, twice. Right. Only two weeks ago, they put up 60 against Wagner. What stands out about the play of their offense? Well, the fact that they can spread the ball around. You know, it all runs through the quarterback, Redding. But mm -hmm. he's such a great decision maker, whether it's who gets to run the ball or who gets to catch the ball, or does he uh, use run pass options? You know, they're very varied in their offensive attack and use a lot of playmakers. So it's not, hey, focus on this and then you can get them stopped. You, They force you to kind of stand there and play base defense and they're really good at exploiting it. And you, as you mentioned, have scored a lot of points many times. Are there any opponents you played this year in which their offense has been comparable to what the Braunfels does? No, not really. You know, 27, uh, 6 a is kind of a black and blue, bloody your nose league, mm -hmm. and uh, they can do that too, but uh, they spray the ball around with the intermediate and deep ball as well, and as well as their short game, and so a little different style of attack, uh, very challenging. And you can bet that the Braunfels' offense will be looking to bounce back after being held to seven points against a very good Clemens defense, which you know of firsthand. Right. You look at the, at the New Braunfels' defense, though, and then they kept the Unicorns in the game last week. And right. throughout the season, their defense has been, has been making some plays, forcing turnovers, holding a, opponents down below their season averages. What do they like to do on defense? Well, you know, they, they like to line up in a three-man front and be very sound. Uh, the, kind of, the kind of defense you don't like to play against. You kind of like those guys that bounce around here, there, and everywhere. and You feel like maybe they won't be real good at anything. Uh, New Braunfels is the opposite approach. You know, we're going to line up a certain way, 
we're going to be really good at it because that's what we do, and they dare you to, to do something about it. And uh, a lot of teams have had a difficult time doing that, and uh, I hope we're not one of them. There was a chance uh, that coming into this week, this game may have been for a playoff spot, depending on what sure. happened this past Friday. That's not the case, but there's still so much on the line. For New Braunfels, a chance to improve the win total from a year ago and to keep you from winning the 27-6A district title outright, which you can do with the win on Friday against the Unicorns. In terms of atmosphere, what are you expecting on Friday? Well, you know, it's our senior night, so we're going to recognize our senior players and, uh, well, what will now not be their last home game, mm -hmm. but last home regular season game. And then, of course, in our case, you know, district title at, uh, aspirations, you know, it can be anywhere from a tri-champion between us, Clemens, and Judson, depending on we, we have to win, of course, and then the outcome of the other games. Uh, if Clemens were to lose their game against Steele, then you know we would be playing for an outright district championship. Mm -hmm. So the chance to win one or share one is, you know, and then you know, and then of course just a rare opportunity to play another good, really fine football team. You know, we're looking forward to the challenge. Uh, wouldn't mind it being a lesser foe, but then we don't have any say so in that. So. Uh, it should be a great atmosphere for football All right, Coach. Friday night. All right, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, Brian. Hello, I'm Steve from GVTC, here to install your one gig per second internet service. Hey, you're Ranger Senior Trayvon Merrick Woodard. No, sir, I'm Steve with GVTC. Come on. Cornerback, kick punt return, wide receiver, I'll be over here. I'll let you know if I need anything. Uh, just came in to set up your Wi-Fi. Thanks, Steve. Just press enter and your GBTC Home Home DVR will record your show automatically. Thanks, Doug from GBTC, who looks exactly like Ranger Senior CJ Keeler. I'm just Doug, here to help. Fumble! Here we go. Can I help you set up your favorite channel list now? This is it, huh? Yep. This is where it all starts and finishes. Joe Pavelic, Jeff Shin, Alan Hill, Pat Bailey. Matt Hilson, Clint Haney, Cody Fuller, Eric Anders, Garrett Smith, Andrew Sandejo, Josh Adkins could have dressed in the soccer. We got work to do, kid. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna go outside, we're gonna get him on the run, we're gonna keep him on the run, then we're gonna go, 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 go. We won't stop until we're across that goal line. This is a team they say is good. Well, I think we're better than them. So what do you say, man? Let me give it a try. Making videos is not easy. It's confusing and it's hard work. Well, I'm here to tell you, when your back's against the wall, call WIC Productions. It's who we use for game night school board production and the Rangers Network. Amazing, Coach. Another perfectly executed shameless plug. Moms, we've got you covered. Bring your kids to Summerhill Dental, no matter how often they say they brush their teeth. Here we go, tie ball game with just two seconds left on the clock and the Rangers are looking to score. 
Here's a snap. Bayless, who was wide open down the near sideline. And he makes a catch at the 10, the 5, touchdown. My goodness, what a play. And the Rangers win. State's Big Flipper. Each team buys low and sells high. The bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. Texas Flip and Move, Friday night at 9, only on DIY Network. Watch DIY, GVTC Digital Cable Channel 126. GVTC, just plain smart. Flimsy microwave bacon tastes. But Wendy's oven baked bacon tastes. Add it to fresh, never frozen beef, and you've got a Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. A JBC with four nuggets, fries, and a drink is what makes Wendy's 4 for 4 so deliciously different. Tom Brady, that's a mic drop. This is football, and this is how it is. Let's just, let's just get right to it. Start your game day with Game Day Morning, football's first pregame show every Sunday. Watch NFL Network. GVTC Digital Cable Channel 579. GVTC, just plain smart. We help wounds in danger. You're with us now. If you missed an episode of The Gifted, watch anytime. It's the show critics are calling chills inducing. Promises to be one of the best Marvel TV series. These people need help. The Gifted is all new Monday on Fox, or watch anytime on demand or Fox Now. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium, about ready for kickoff here for the final game of the regular season. And again, Smith Valley is postseason bound. In fact, the Rangers will play here at Ranger Stadium next Friday in the first round of the Division Two. 6A postseason against either Jay or Brandeis. Those two playing tonight. So, Tony, the stakes coming into the game last week, we thought the stakes of this game might be very high. If the Rangers did not win that game in overtime against the Rockets, this would be a virtual playoff game this evening. It's not. Stakes not as high as they may have been, but for the Rangers, they get a chance to win the 27-6A title. That's big. You know, and it could have been even big for New Braunfels had they not fallen last week. They, mm -hmm. would have, they would be playing for a right to be in the playoffs right. and would have had to up in Smithson Valley to get that chance uh, because they lost last week. They lost that opportunity. Lost to Clemens 17-7. That was a scoreless game at halftime last week. 3-0 Clemens at the end of three. And the Buffaloes put the game away late. The Broncos in offense first. This game is underway. In Dolph, in kick from Mason Reed, returning after a one-week absence. And the kick is deep for a touchback. And we could look now at senior quarterback Ryan Redding. In his career, nearly 5,000 total yards of offense, 43 touchdowns. He is a threat. He has been the man for their offense for a couple of years. And and a dangerous, a dangerous weapon for him because, again, he runs and throws equally well. We should note, though, that in this game a year ago, the Rangers shut him down. Redding only 87 total yards in what was a Smithson Valley win over the Unicorns, 50-14. to 14. And Redding operates with four wide and first down. It is a run, the first play of the game for the Bronfels is a good one. Not across the 30 to the 31-yard line. For Piali Thomas, their junior tailback, at least 600 yards rushing on the air, seven touchdowns, good opening play for the Broncos. Yeah, an average is nine and a half yards a carry, which is unusual for a running back to get anywhere near that. And you saw right there where we thought we had him a yard or two, mm -hmm. he gets five out of it. Just underway from Ranger Stadium, no score, 30 seconds in. Running of the offense going to work on second and five, and running will keep it himself. He's got the first down and more. Near the 40-yard line, slides down to the 38. Two plays in and a first down for the Forty Broncos. Great tackle by Brady Chubb, the strong safety who's come on for an excellent season in this his senior year. 
Redding again, a, a dual threat, and we saw right there carried out a great fake to the running back and got free himself. Chubb had 11 tackles last week in the win over the Rockets. As the Brothels with six wins on the year operates at its own 38. One minute gone by in a scoreless game. A screen pass is ruled complete out to about the 40-yard line. Holding it in is Zachary Yaw, senior uh, receiver at times tailback for, for the Unicorns. And now second down and eight. Quick pass, tried to get it out there, tried to do like a screen, Grant, but the throw was such that he had to dive just to make the catch. That's this new Bronfels offense, a lot of the screen game for head coach Glenn Mangold in his fourth season now at the helm for New Bronfels. On second down and eight, Redding will throw. A quick pass, it's caught. Nice attempt there to haul it in by Austin Schriever. Tony and I were talking about him in the pregame show. That's good for about five yards to bring up third down and short. Most catches on the team with 26, and yet only two touchdowns. So not really they got not really the guy they look for in the red zone. He had a big game about five weeks ago at Canyon, over 100 yards receiving. Since then, only 101 yards in four combined games for Schriever, who lines up wide to the right on third down and three at the New Braunfels 45. And Redding will run it on the option, trying to find the corner. Stumbles his way down to the 47. He needed the 48, though, for the first down and fourth and short coming up now for the Unicorns. Good looking play from his part, though uh, Chubb missed a tackle there. Good job by Woodard to come up and finish it. Uh, this is a, a young man who will be elusive if we don't make the initial tackle. You know, I wonder here, New Braunfels has nothing to lose in this game, a chance to spoil Smithson Valley's title hopes, so why not? And they'll go for a fourth down and a yard at their own 47. And Redding will hand off to Thomas up the middle, darts ahead for the first down. Good run play there from Thomas, the junior, and New Braunfels keeps possession. Straight ahead blocking by the offensive line that time. They got enough of a surge for the extra couple of yards they needed. And there are some big bodies on that New Braunfels offensive line. Look at left tackle, big number 71, Weston Wright, 6'7", 305 pounds. <laughs> He's the biggest by far, and he is a, a definite uh, candidate to play on Saturdays. From midfield and first down, Redding will throw, pressured, Going deep, got a man open, and the pass broken up. Woodard at the last second knocked it away. And there again, Tanner Steele was wide open, running late and seeing him as Woodard looks a little shaken up. Redding got some great blocking on that play by West and Wright as Keeler had come around the, uh, the right end and had a chance to get into Redding, but uh, again, Wright did a great job of keeping him away, and that gave Redding a chance to step up and make the long throw. His receiver, though, had to wait for it, and Woodard is still down as uh, there was a pretty serious contact between he and the, the receiver on that play. Ranger Stadium, as quiet as you've ever heard it right now, Trevon Merrick Woodard, the hero last week, caught the game-winning touchdown against Johnson, star player over the past three seasons, bound for TCU's program next year, a player that nobody throws the ball against. Teams try to kick the ball away from him in the punt and kickoff return games and is uh, slow to get up right now. All the eyes right now are on Trevon Merrick Woodard and now being helped up. And the Rangers hope it's nothing serious. Certainly could have been as something as simple as just got the wind knocked out of him, which you expect on mm -hmm. something like that, or maybe got hit uh, in a different part that, uh, that just stings for a while. Uh, he seems to be okay as he walks off, almost more shook up than anything. Helmet is off as DeBroffel sets up second and ten. And in a quarterback at his place, Christian Romano, here on second down. There's motion for DeBroffel. It is a handoff to steal the motion man, trying to find an alley. And the Rangers slam him down inside of midfield of the 48 for a couple of yards. Third down, eight to go. So what if we run six or seven plays? The defense to me just looks like right now for Smithson Valley that they're still just feeling it out. Yeah. Uh, no one has really broken loose very far. The, the pass play would have been the biggest pass play we've seen in a while. 
but the defense is getting there just not as quickly as we've seen them in the past. And I think they're just still feeling out the uh, unicorn offense. And this defense for the Rangers has been tough all year long. In district play alone, they have forced 15 turnovers. Third and eight for Redding and the DuBronville's offense. He will throw a strike and a first down inside the 40. Out of bounds is Ethan Dulaban. Out around the 36-yard line, and right away, New Braffles picks on Romano at cornerback. Dulabon's one of those receivers that's an excellent athlete. Uh, again, we talked about the fact that he leads the team with four touchdown receptions, but he's a young man who can go up and get the ball in traffic as well. Again, Trevon Merrick Woodard on the sidelines right now on the table, being looked at by the training staff. Possession for New Braffles is already more than three minutes old. Now the Ranger 37, it began at their own 25, running on the quarterback run, unable to slip the tackle of Jacob Zuber, but not many people have been able to do that this year. Zuber leading tackler on the team, and that time wrapped him up and wouldn't let him go. Jacob has had a marvelous season, and this is uh, senior year. That good for two yards to bring up second down and eight. Zuber over the past two games alone, 37 tackles, 21 against Canyon. Second down at eight to go for Redding in the offense for New Braunfels at the Ranger 35. A throw to the far side is incomplete. Or did he bring it in? To Shriver, they are going to say that he was at a bound. So, third and long now coming up for New Braunfels. One of, the, one of the things that I've heard all week is they don't drop a lot of passes, though I would think that would have to be under that uh, description. That was right in his hands as he did a little out route and didn't hang on to it. Well, this might not be, you know, one play and that's it for New Braunfels here. We've already seen them go for a fourth down once in the drive back at their own end of the field. So it might be two plays here to get eight yards. On third and eight, steal the motion man. A fake to him, a run for running and runs right into Zuber. Also there was Keeler. Those two have been arguably two of the Rangers' best defensive players in their front seven this season, and now fourth and six for New Braunfels. And it's funny because you stack one up as the right defensive end and the other as the outside linebacker right off of his shoulder. This left uh, right side of the defense, left side of the offense, has been tough going all year long. We can report, by the way, that Woodard is off the table and back onto the field. Great side for the Rangers. Fourth and six now for New Braunfels. Again, not much to play for, so why not? And Redding steps up, looking, throws deep, and overshot his receiver. Looking for Yaws downfield, but a long developing play there. Great defense by Swiston Valley. And he took a really nice hit by Jack Gibbons to, to make that throw even tougher. I just think his whole deal getting rid of the ball there was let's get an incomplete pass at the least and get the ball you know, in, in situation where they can't intercept it. Now, if there is a silver lining for the Braffles, that drive not yielding points ate up a lot of yeah. clock. The first quarter clock already nearly halfway expired. 6.26 to go in the opening quarter. No score as we see Levi Williams take the field for his 10th start this year. So far, 8-1, same record as the team, obviously. It goes to work from his zone 33. And on first down, he will throw a completion to a Dorsal Hunter. What a target he's been this year. Up across the 45 to the 46-yard line for Ranger first down. Nice, nice look and play there. You have Gilliam going, going deep, straight out. You had Pierce in motion as the receiver. He goes about 10, 15 yards and out. And you just dump it off to Hunter five yards from the line of scrimmage. He gets a nice gain and, and a really deceptive kind of play where the last guy is the one who got it. Tony, I've gotten the sense from you that your favorite Ranger this season has been a Dorsal Hunter. He's made some big catches, and I think he needs to make big catches for this team. Ranger's first running play and first down is a run for Aiken and corkscrew down to the 46-yard line. Good New Braunfels defense that time on the stop for the Unicorns, Farley Bevel. Tony and I, before the game started, looked at this New Braunfels defense, and what really stood out is a play of their linebackers. They are something else. Uh, 98 tackles with one of them, 91 with the other. They make a lot of plays. Bevel, the one with 91, the other that Tony alluded to, Trevor Pierce with 98. On first down, it is a running play, and the ball fumbled on the toss, and New Braunfels says they've got it. 
Officials uh, will rule that Aiken jumped back into the football with about five New Braunfels players right over him. Somehow got back to it, and the Rangers fortunate to have it now third down and 15. Just watching there, the pitch didn't look bad necessarily. I just think Nick took his eye off of it too early and went down on the ground. He had already vacated the spot and had to really hurry back to get to it. The Braunfels trying to influence the officials on that call. The Rangers have been a bit sloppy with the football the past few weeks. Th seven turnovers over the past three games. On third and 15, Williams will throw it towards the sideline for Woodard. Knocked away by Marcus Riley. The pass break up and Smith Valley's offense will punt the ball back to New Braunfels. Levi Williams had nothing to do but just try to, to squirt it in there and he knew that wasn't much of a chance. Woodard actually fell down and slipped down mm -hmm. uh, on his break on that play and that's why that play wasn't uh, as open as uh, uh, I, I think Levi Williams had hoped it would be. Here is a snap to Brantz Anderson. Didn't see much of him last week as, as Mr. Valley put up 40 against Judson. Had a fair catch called for and made by Colson Clark at the 14-yard line. Probably one of the better punts we've seen from Brantz Anderson in a while. 45-yard boot, no return. 4.41 to go, opening quarter, no score. Smithson Valley and New Braunfels. And again, the Unicorns defensively last week were very good against Clemens. Only allow the Buffaloes to pick up 22 yards through the air last week. One completion for Clemens all of last week. And only 10 points given up to the Buffaloes offense. They scored 17, but they got a touchdown. A critical one on a kickoff return late in the fourth quarter. Redding in the offense on a second possession. They will run a run on first down. And Redding weaving his way through the Ranger defense and dropped by Benoa Pow Pow and Zoop right around the 22. That's good for eight yards, second and two now. After their first drive, I think their coaches probably saw one of the best weapons they have is his straight ahead run. Keep it off the edge, don't let him go to the corners, but go straight ahead and see if he can find a seam to get a good gain that time he did. Earlier in the year, Redding ran for 222 yards against Seguin. And he's run for over 100 yards four times this season. On second is short. This time we'll head it off to Piale Thomas. And turns out the first down. On the stop there was Witcher along with Gibbons and New Braunfels. Another fresh set of downs. Their offensive line seems to be getting some surge right off the bat again on this drive like they did the first one. Defense again going to have to adjust and uh, see where they can make a stop. 18th all-time meeting between these two. Smith Valley leads the all-time series 9-8. New Braunfels, though, has not beaten the Rangers since 2009. First down run for Redding, finds a hole, breaks a tackle across the 40. There he goes. A chance to go all the way inside the 20, inside the 10, and push it to bounds. Ethan Sill, the touchdown-saving tackle inside the 5, all the way down to the 3-yard line. And you saw right there what we talked about in the first drive. Not one, not two, three missed tackles mm -hmm. at different points in the first five, 10, and 20 yards of that run. Uh, he's a tough guy to bring down. The Rangers are finding out right now. 72-yard run for Redding, one yard shy of a season long, and, and there you see what New Braunfels' offense is capable of. Yes. Again, credit to Clemens and that great defense of theirs to hold this offense to seven points last week. On first to goal now, Redding. From the three, hands off to Thomas, up the left side, breaks a tackle, and he's in. Touchdown, New Braunfels. What a drive there, a quick one by the Unicorn, set up by the big run from Ryan Redding. And uh, Thomas scored the touchdown without one of his shoes on. They pulled off uh, uh, one of his shoes in the midst of that attempted at tackle, but uh, Unicorn strike first, two good drives they put together. And for Piale Thomas, his eighth rushing score this season. Out for the PAT is Dalen Welch-Lavender. And that kick is up. A line drive kick through the pipes, and the Unicorns have struck first. 3.19 to go, opening quarter. New Braunfels 7, Smith Valley nothing. This is Ranger football on the Rangers Network. When you're ready for a break, hurry in to Chicken Express. Let us do all the cooking for you. We always offer high quality, affordable meals that the entire family will enjoy. Our chicken is never frozen and it's hand battered fresh so you can really taste the difference. 
You can expect fast and friendly service at Chicken Express, whether you dine in, drive through, or drive up. Hurry in and hurry back to Chicken Express. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium. New Braunfels on top, seven to zip. Moments ago, a three-yard touchdown run by Piali Thomas, set up by the 72-yard gallop by quarterback Ryan Redding. And again, New Braunfels tonight trying to spoil the Rangers' hopes for an outright 27-6A title. And they can accomplish that with a win tonight. No matter what happens between Judson and Canyon, the Rangers got some help in that department last night with a thrilling win by Steele over Clemens, 14-13. A last-minute affair there in Cibolo. Short kickoff fielded by Aiken. Running at the 20, across the 30, has a block. Inside of midfield, there goes Nick Aiken. Still motoring inside the 20-yard line. Out of bounds, they'll mark him out at the 19. What a return there by Nick Aiken. And there is a flag. All the way back in midfield. midfield, yeah. Guess that would mean we'd be going back because they have already picked up the ball. And yeah, there it is, the hold against Smithson Valley. So wipes out a great return by Aiken and a potential short field for the Rangers offensively. And I'm sure you saw what I saw as he had the lane he did. on the outside edge of the field. Whether that held hat happened or not right I don't think it mattered and no. yet it brings a, a kickoff return back someone doing something somewhere that doesn't matter and gets mm -hmm. caught 29 yards on the return and, a 15 yard and by the way Smith Valley facing an early deficit again they were down virtually the entire game against Clemens and of course last week traded blows with Judson in that game there were seven lead changes last week a game that featured 930 yards of offense, 37 first downs, but neither team led by more than seven points. After the penalty, first down from the 39. And Williams will head it off to Aiken. After the big return, he is absolutely drilled. Good hit there by Farley Bevel of your Broadfalls. Second down and eight to go. Again, that's that linebacker we talked about, Pierce and Bevel. They're the two guys that have made most of the hits this year, and that was a big one. And again, after early scare for Trevon Merrick Wooder to still out there right now and playing wide receiver. From the 41, second out at eight, Williams pressured, flush out of the pocket, trying to make a play with his feet, and runs into about four unicorns who finally force him out of bounds. And there we see Trevor Pierce in on that play for the unicorns, and Third out and five now coming up for Smithson Valley. Kind of, I was watching the receivers on that play, and the two here on the near side both went about 15 yards and then just stopped and turned mm -hmm. around. It's like um, they didn't really offer Levi a whole lot to throw to if this was the area he wanted to go to. Haven't seen much of Mason Pierce, the receiver, in the game yet tonight. Third down, four to go. Just shy of midfield, and Williams will throw it. Here's the blitz, evades it. Throws off his back foot, and a catch made. Jeremiah Gilliam filling in for the injured Ricky Rios makes a third down catch to the first down. Gilliam's that guy that we've called upon late in the season. A lot of jet sweeps early on in the season. This time makes a big catch on a big third down play. And the Rangers inside of Unicorn Territory now for the first time tonight. Final 100 seconds of the opening quarter. And your Braffles on top, seven to zip. And here's motion from Woodard. He'll take the handoff. Has a block to the outside. It is stiff arm, and it is Thomas who wrestles him down short of the 40 at about the 30 or the 41-yard line. Gain of three, second down and seven. Good job. Uh, most of the time that uh, Woodard can get that stiff arm and keep a defender away, this time it didn't work, and he got spun out of bounds with a short gain. And that actually was Trevor Pierce to stop. And again, a tackling machine. Seven games this year with ten tackles or more. Second to seven, run play for Aiken up the gut and powers his way to about the 37. That's 400 yards to bring up third down and three. 
You know, there's been a lot of games this year where Nick Aiken has been able to squirt through and get good yardage. Tonight, every time he's carried the ball up the middle, he's been hit right near the line of scrimmage, and that time he was able to muscle ahead. Uh, but he's got had some tough going up the middle tonight. Last week against Johnston, only 11 carries, but 52 hard-earned yards and a very important touchdown in the second quarter. On third down and three, here's a run to the outside and first down yardage to the Nebrothel's 31-yard line. Big gainer there for Chris Rivera. We spoke about him last week. Maybe the smallest player you'll see take the field tonight. Rivera, 5'6", and a buck 45. Cooper Kaufman made the hit, and again, it was a plant-type hit that, uh -huh. that Gilliam saw. I mean, uh, uh, not Gilliam. Rivera. Rivera yeah. saw as he went to the sideline, he was planted right there. First quarter clock running down. Rangers down, seven to zip, and Williams will run a draw on the handoff to Aiken. How about that run? Darting inside the 25, hitting a defender to the 23-yard line for eight yards, and that will be the final play of the opening quarter. Something tells me that handoff wasn't exactly the way it was planned. A little for, awkward for there. For the quarterback to turn all the way around and pass it behind his back almost. Well, if broken plays yield eight yards, yes. then you'll take him. Yes, we will. 12 minutes in the books from Ranger Stadium. Smith Valley seeking out the 27-6-8 title, but with work to do, Trailing 7 to zip. This is Smith Valley Football on the Rangers Network. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Comal Independent School District, HEB, GVTC, WIC Productions, Ferris Orthodontics, Summer Hill Dental, Smoky Moe's Barbecue, and Pizza Hut. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium. Smith Valley down seven to zip as we start the second quarter of play. Again, not much on the line tonight for the Brothels. One small feat, though, is we mentioned this is year four for Coach Glenn Mangold. In every of his previous three seasons, they have improved their win total. Had a chance to do that again with a win tonight. They won six games a year ago. It's Levi Williams on second down and two. Calls his own number. Good enough for a first down to the 20-yard line. A designed quarterback run there. Kind of a good-looking run by Levi, too. Caught it, uh, uh, faked the handoff, and went straight ahead over the right side. First down yardage is always good. You know, I'm not sure if all the way back in the week one opener against Hendrickson, if we could have predicted that Levi Williams would be the team's leading rusher, yet here we are in week 10 saying that. And, and first down, it is a play fake by Williams at a throw and a catch inside the 10. There's Mason Pierce making an appearance at a first down. What a great route he ran. What a dart of a throw Levi Williams made. What was really most amazing is that Pierce was able to hang on to it before he went out of bounds. A great completion. Again, what a night for Mason Pierce at Judson last week. Four catches, a buck 69, and two touchdowns. And now goal to go for the nine-yard line after that last catch. For Williams in the offense, it is a run for Aiken up the middle and rams into the pile. And out of the five-yard line from there, second and goal. Adorzel Hunter was one of the blockers that uh, went into the line ahead of Nick. He got shaken up just a little bit. I'm telling you what, this is, you know, we've played some pretty good football teams this year. Yeah. This team seems to be hitting, New Braunfels seems to be hitting as hard as any team I've seen so far. And now the Rangers shifting personnel here on second and goal from the five. See Diego Cervantes, the backfield here, coming in motion. And a motion from Pierce, takes a handoff, a block from Cervantes, turns a corner, looking for the pylon. They're going to mark him out of bounds at around the one, but a piddly marker down. This might come back a few yards. Good-looking play. Pierce just ran out of real estate to get around the corner. Ended up knocking the pylon down, but not uh, probably not going to do much good right now as it looks like they'll mark this one back. Remember, this drive had a chance of beginning at around the Unicorn 19 on a great return by Aiken, taken back 
due to a holding penalty. And now after this hold, it is second and goal from the 15-yard line. Not the kind of play calling situation that you'd like to be in, but it does give you a little more room to throw the ball. No Pierce in the lineup right now, although Wooder does check back in at receiver. Second and goal for the 15. Here's a blitz from New Braunfels. Williams stepping up, throws in zone, overshot Gilliam. It was also a bit late turning for the football there. And now third and goal and your options are limited. That might just be experience between the receiver and the quarterback there. I think uh, Levi threw it expecting Gilliam to go this way, and mm -hmm. Gilliam was running yeah. a route that was, you know, maybe two, three yards different than what uh, Levi expected. The Braffles looking pretty impressive so far. Again, their second drive. They took it about 80-plus yards. Big play on the drive, the 72-yard run by Redding, setting up a short touchdown run by Thomas. And the defense... Holding strong right now. Third and goal for the 15 for Williams and the Rangers. And Williams will throw. Going end zone over Shot Gilliam again, running the post. Defended out there by Luke Simpson. And now the Rangers send out the field goal unit. That time I think Levi had him. He just overthrew him a little bit too tall. So last week there was no Mason Reed available. It did affect play calling on the Rangers' final regulation possession, if you recall, with no Reed out there, instead of kicking a potential game-winning field goal from about 40 yards out, they went for it on fourth down and didn't get it. This, a 32-yard attempt to put the Rangers on the board. Good snap, hold down, kick up by Reed, and it is still nothing on the scoreboard for the Rangers. Kick is no good, and it brothels his defense again holds they have been as I mentioned just a few minutes ago the hardest hitting defense we've seen in a while every tackle seems to be uh, a hard hit and you think about that scoreboard over to our left right now the seven for New Braunfels it is tough to hold this team down to 7, 10, 14 points. The Rangers offense is going to have to score you know 24 plus in this game to win it And already one quarter gone by. And now New Braunfels on offense for the third time tonight. From their own 20. And Redding will keep it himself. He is so dangerous on the run. But that time the Rangers bottle him up after only a two-yard pickup. Second and eight to go from the 22-yard line. What's really interesting is their offensive line gets a little bit of a surge. Our defensive line starting to push back a little bit, mm -hmm. helping the linebackers out. Uh, that time, I think there were a lot of different uh, or, uh, Rangers in on the tackle because the defensive line held its own. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. And the Prof was looking for the upset on top, 7 to nothing. As Redding operates out of the shotgun, his comfort zone, and he will throw. Here's the blitz, hit as he throws, passes incomplete. Don't see many balls thrown to receivers covered by Trevon Merrick Woodard. Redding takes that chance. Incomplete, though, to Shriver, now third and eight. Didn't know if the ball was a little bit short. Shriver really didn't have much of a chance to catch it. Woodard hit him pretty quick, but mm -hmm. I think the ball was already out when he made contact. And Woodard still doesn't look quite right right now. Bending over a bit. Appears to be laboring just a, just a, a little bit right now for Smithson Valley. As now it's third and seven for DeBronfels. And Redding will head it off on the sweep to the outside. Not going to do it. Attacker for loss all the way back at the 15-yard line. Great Ranger defensive pursuit there, and it brings up fourth down. It was really interesting. They had trips out to this side, three receivers, and all three defensive backs spotted it quickly and ran in. Chubb was there uh, second to, to get to the sweep, and that was really an ill-conceived play. And a good bounce back there by the Rangers defense after giving up the touchdown drive, the possession prior, forcing a three and out. And now Woodard back to return the punt here from Lavender. Good snap. And the punt may have been tipped by Witcher. And picked oh. up by New Braunfels far too soon, by the way, by Yaws. That ball would have rolled another 10, 15 yeah. yards easily. Instead, first and 10, Rangers coming up at the 34-yard line. Interesting. 
that's a little bit of a shock that one of the guys covering the punt would yeah. do that. But, yeah, it did look like someone got a hand on it because it came out kind of funky. And uh, good, good field position for the Rangers. And how about Trey Witcher coming in to get that block on the punt? And now the Rangers come out at offense. Last possession ending in a missed field goal from 32 yards away. Williams back to throw, going deep over the middle for Woodard, makes a catch. Goes right by the defender into the end zone for an easy walk-in touchdown. Well, I don't – that was just bad coverage on that play. The defender goes for the ball on the wrong shoulder uh, as Woodard brings it down and spins off his right shoulder. The defensive back is on his left side and had no chance. Boy, that's now back-to-back -back touchdowns for Woodard. Seeing single coverage, running a post, and the defender just having no chance. And now read out to tie the game following the touchdown by Woodard. And for him, his eighth this year. Kick is good, and we're tied seven apiece. 8.57 to go, second quarter. This is Smith Valley football on the Rangers Network. Moms, we've got you covered. Bring your kids to Summerhill Dental, no matter how often they say they brush their teeth. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium. Final game, regular season. Good one so far. We're tied at seven. Moments ago, Levi Williams to Trevon Merrick Woodard, and what a combination that's been this year. I'm telling you, about a, a minute and 11 seconds ago of football time, we were sitting here wondering what, what the Rangers were going to be able to do because you were not going to be able to hold the Unicorns down. Right. And just like that, a partially blocked punt, good field position, one successful pass play, and all of a sudden we're tied. And Reed's kickoff fielded about a yard deep and a wise decision there by the DeBronfels returner back deep, Joey Thomas, to take a knee. And DeBronfels' offense, which has been up and down in this game, their, uh, their second drive of the game, again, linked to the field. Got a touchdown from Piale Thomas, set up by a 72-yard run by Redding. Last drive, though, three and out as the offense comes out trying to respond to the Rangers scoring drive. Play calling is so important. We've seen that in football through all the years we've watched. And mm -hmm. sometimes you call plays that seem to be the most successful ones you've ever run, and they don't work. And right. you get a three and out on three great plays that just didn't work this time. Redding the last four games has been off target throwing the football. A completion percentage south of 50 at 46%. A run here for Thomas hit by Eggleston. And dragged down by Chubb at around the 34-yard line. Good first down play there for New Braunfels. The marker back at the 32 for seven yards, second and three. It's interesting. Most of the guys that were rushing in, you know, getting in the backfield that time where it was Zoig and uh, was Zuber, so the defensive line didn't get much pressure and weren't really around the tackle on the initial point. Second and three for Redding. And he will keep it himself up the left side, and Witcher from behind, able to drag him down. Also see Gibbons on the play there for the Rangers. That's gonna set up third down, two to go. Great defensive stop that time as we really got off blocks quick to make the stop. Now a third and two, Brant, that I think really at this point in the game, the th defense gets a stop here and mm -hmm. changes the whole complexion. The Bronfels had all the momentum following that missed field goal by Mason Reed early in the quarter. Since then, the Rangers have bounced back. Third down, two to go. Running, hands off to Thomas. That's not going to do it. Stuffed short of the yard again. Smith Valley's front seven looking very impressive there. Keeler in on the tackle. And New Braunfels will punt the football for the second time tonight. And again, linebackers Zoig and Gibbons very active on the play along with the defensive line, stopping that running attack at the point. The last punt by Lavender was tipped by Witcher. And Woodard again, so dangerous, awaits back at his own 33. Here is a snap. 
And not much, uh, much of a rush that time. Woodard will let it go, and a unicorn roll inside the 25 out of bounds at the 21-yard line. 45-yard punt. No return, 7.03 to go until halftime. Knotted at seven apiece. A lot of people see that and say, well, why Woodard goes up and catches it. He saves about 10 yards. I think, mm -hmm. I think he's learned in his years of returning punts for the Unicorns that the best thing he can do right now is not put himself in a precarious position. And that, that would have been tough to try to field that one on a dead run mm -hmm. and try to turn up field. Again, Smith Valley's best scoring quarter this season has been the second with their touchdown earlier in this quarter. Now 123 points scored in second quarters this season. From their own 21, here's motion from Pierce. Fake the give to him. The quarterback, Williams, will keep it himself and turn out about three yards to the 24-yard line. Second down, seven to go. Their defensive front seven really playing well tonight as well. Uh, their linebackers, we've talked about Bevel and Pierce, and they've got a lot of guys, Marsh and Kadena and uh, Thomas up on the line that seem to be real active right now and starting to make some plays. The Brothels and non-district play looked really good. They went 3-0, putting up 44, 69, and 54 and wins over Alamo Heights, Seguin, and St. Marcus. But since then, 27 6 A's happened. They've gone 3-3 three three so far in district. On second and seven, Williams off the pump fake, flushed out and throws the ball wisely away. Lives to play another play. Third down and seven now coming up. You talked about their offense in those games, but in those games they gave up 19-42 yeah. and 42. And I think that, as much as anything, has been part of their problem. While their offense has been potent most of the time, they haven't been able to stop people who have the ability to score. The funny thing is, though, Tony, that was a bigger narrative in the early part of the year. Recently, New Braunfels' defense has actually been pretty good over the past five games, only giving up about 15 points per game, but the offense has gone quiet at the wrong time. Third and seven, Williams taking a shot deep. And he's got Raider ball, the catch. No, they're going to say out of bounds. Right at the Rangers sideline in front of Coach Hill. Ruled incomplete, but what a great effort there by the 6-2 sophomore wideout, Draylon Raider ball. That was a great catch. I thought he got a foot down, but again, between the players and the tubas, we couldn't see the edge of the field. Right. And, uh, great job of bringing it in. Spoke with Coach Hill earlier in the week, by the way. And he thinks Raider Ball might be one of the best receivers ever to come through the Ranger program. Look out for him in years to come. Here's a punt from Anderson. And takes a sideways bounce out of bounds at around the New Braunfels 42-yard line. Only a 34-yard putt. 5.57 to go until halftime. Tied seven apiece. 34-yard punt, no return. Still right. a positive on that scenario. You'd like it to be longer, but no return helps a lot. Again, the four playoff teams are set in 27-6A. Smithson Valley, Judson, Steele, and Clemens. And we know two of the playoff matchups already after the results from last night. Two wild games in this playoff picture. On first down for the 43, running will head it off to Thomas and Reading that beautifully was Keeler, the tackle. Also there was Zoig holding the Brothels to a gain of two yards, second down, eight to go. So in Division One, Steele will play Brennan, and in the other D1 matchup, Smithson Valley will play either Jay or Brandeis here next week. In D2, the matchup, Clemens against O'Connor in one game, and the other, Judson against either Taft or Warren. So potentially down the road in the region finals, maybe could see Smithson Valley and Steele for the second time. Judson still looks to me to be one of the most impressive teams we've seen this year. I agree. Second and eight. Redding keeps it himself. And the Rangers again defensively on target there. Witcher on the tackle there for Smithson Valley along with Flores. Third down, eight to go. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Redding that time seemed to hesitate before he took off. Uh-huh. In, in all the scenario of whatever was happening around him, instead of taking the snap, making a, uh, making a fake and going, he kind, of, he kind of hung out for a while, and the defenders got to him way too quickly before he could get to the hole. And now running face with third and eight at his zone, 45, under five minutes to go. 
Second quarter still tied seven apiece. And Redding will throw, facing a four-man rush. Here comes the pressure, and Redding evades it. A flag flies in from behind. This might be a hold against New Braunfels. For the time being, a first down, but that's going to come back. And that's a tough one because where that flag is, he mm -hmm. was through that hole. One of the offensive linemen is beating himself up over the play, but uh, we don't know who made the call, but we do know that uh, Brock Pittman, our referee, was pretty emphatic about throwing mm -hmm. that flag and bringing that one back. And again, one team in this district not going to the postseason despite finishing with a winning record. These New Braunfels Unicorns and their playoff win drought will continue. They have not won a postseason game since 2011. Third and 16 now following the penalty. And Redding will throw. Good protection holding up strong. Pass to win complete. Mason Pierce blanket coverage against Tanner Steele downfield. And New Braunfels again will punt it. You know, you mentioned their playoff drought. This is a program, though, that in the previous decade had oh, a couple yeah. of nice appearances in the state playoffs all the way to the state semifinals, if I remember right. Back in 07 and again in 2009 and, of course, back in the 90s. A great program led by Jim Streety and a quarterback by the name of Cliff Kingsbury, now the head coach of Texas Tech. And here is the punt. And that ball sails out of bounds. A really short punt there by Lavender. They'll mark it out at the Ranger 46-yard line. That's a 17-yard punt there for Lavender. Here's the funny thing about it. Our sideline judge on this side was looking back to the referee to give him the mark, uh -huh. and our referee took off running. So I'm not sure it, I'm not sure the 46 is right, but nobody's going to get anything better right now because no one gave this side judge uh, any help. That's got to be a tough job, judging when that ball goes out of bounds, when it's that far out well, of bounds. Unless you're running underneath it, you have no idea. And even four minutes to go until halftime, still tied seven apiece. And here is Williams, the quarterback on the pump fake. He will run it into those two inside linebackers, squeezing him down, Bevel and Pierce. Although Williams, a good first down run. A gain of six yards to the New Braunfels 48, second down, four to go. And Levi did a great job there of not absorbing all of the hit to the ground right. and did a nice job with both of them pursuing him that time to get the ball a good six yards and not take a big hit. Levi Williams has been impressive in his first year as a Ranger starter. Huge shoes to fill for the departing Josh Atkins. Here is a run sweep for Trevon Merrick Woodard. And he's out of bounds. TMW at around the 40-yard line, but a penalty marker down. And this one might come back due to another hole in this game. This would be one of the lead blockers on the play, which could be the receiver out on that end. One of the favorite calls tonight by our officiating crew has been the hold. Body language saying this one is coming back. Oh. It's not a hold, but a chop block against Mission Valley. And so the Rangers go from a first down with the football now being marked all the way back behind their own 40-yard line. And obviously since the first down was gained, but it doesn't count because the penalty in, uh, came before the first down. A chop block easily defined as when you're engaging with a blocker mm -hmm. and one of your teammates hits that defender below the waist, you can't do that. Water is still in the game at receiver here on second down and 16. And they'll throw it his way on the screen. He falls down awkwardly. But he just slipped, mad at himself for doing that. And now third down at about 18 to go. <laughs> Everyone saw the play coming. Mm -hmm. Woodard just tried to get going before his feet were planted, and the turf ate him up. Career winding down for Trevon Merrick Woodard. How far can he take it? Depends how far the Rangers go in the postseason. Third down, 18 now. The Rangers have to reach the Unicorn 44. Williams to throw it, going deep for Woodard. Well covered, and the ball batted away by Thomas. 
That was just tremendous step for step coverage there by Joey Thomas, New Braunfels' senior cornerback. It was. I think uh, Levi just decided I'm going to air this one out and see if we can get a big play right before halftime. Mm -hmm. Woodard did a nice job of really keeping it away from being an interception. Now we'll have to punt. That's now nine pass breakups on the year for Thomas. Good build, 6'1", 178. Might have a college football future as well. Anderson's been busy, the Ranger punter tonight. Here's a big rush from the Braunfels. Got the punt away. And that ball takes a Ranger roll inside the 20. One of the better punts of the year for Brantz Anderson. Out of bounds at around the 17-yard line. It's a 50, 45-yard punt, beg your pardon. With no return, 2.27 to go until halftime. Still tied, 7-all. And with 2.27 to go, you've got to expect the uh, Unicorn offense to try to get something. Mm -hmm. Be nice for the defense to come up with another turnover. I would think the Braunfels will keep this drive run heavy, knowing that the second half will open with Smithson Valley getting the football. Don't want the Rangers going two for one. On first down for their own 18. Redding will throw it. Here's a pressure, steps up. He will run now, and he's dangerous in the open field. Slice down short of the 40-yard line. On the tackle there was Zuber. Out around the 38, that's a pickup of about 20 yards into the Braunfels' first down. Once Redding broke the line of scrimmage, there's no one on this team you'd expect more than to be chasing him down right. than Jacob Zuber, and he caught him after a lengthy gain, but he did catch him. With well, a moment the play breaks down for Redding, he just makes one himself. He's so good. Again in the open field. And the Braunfels, with two minutes to go on the clock, three timeouts remaining not in a big hurry right now as Smithson Valley calls for a timeout. Or no, the Braunfels did. That is their first. They have two remaining. Not so, a, not, excuse me. Go ahead. I was going to say, you think about the big plays in this game. New Braunfels, of course, New Braunfels, of course got theirs on a 72-yard run by Redding, setting up New Braunfels' touchdown, a three-yard run by Piotr Thomas. The Rangers got their score on a 34-yard strike. Williams to Trevon Merrick Woodard. The big play has been a big story for New Braunfels this season. The Unicorns have scored four non-offensive touchdowns this year, and 23 of their offensive scores have come from 20 yards or further out. But they're giving up the big plays as well. 16 touchdowns given up 20 yards or longer. Seven of those have covered over 60 yards. So this game, relatively low scoring for New Braunfels Unicorn football game. <laughs> their defense, is, as you mentioned, got them back into some games late in the year, but their mm -hmm. offense hasn't produced as much. On first down from the 38, it is a run for Thomas. Flips it back to Steele. He's got some blockers to the outside. And finally cut down by Woodard and Chubb. Down to the Ranger 46. Great play design there by the Unicorns. Nothing like it that we've seen tonight. But we have seen Thomas running the ball mm -hmm. a lot. Good time for a reverse that uh, gets them into plus territory. Boy, two run plays, and bam, yeah. New Braunfels right there into Ranger territory. Clock ticking, 90 seconds to go. Tied at seven. Here's a run for running up the middle. Squeezed down to the 40-yard line for six. Clock will continue to tick. And now stop on a timeout called by who? By New Braunfels, their second, minute 19 to go. And again, threatening at the Ranger 40-yard line. Look at the first half rushing totals for New Braunfels. Already 164 yards in this game. A buck 32 for the quarterback, Redding. I was going to say a 72-yard run sure helps, but he mm -hmm. has 11 carries for right. 50 yards, which aren't, you know, that's nothing to cough at either. And the Rangers' rush defense has been pretty solid, so, solid so far this season. What's well, been really good. Mm -hmm. They were tested pretty heavily last week against Judson, especially in the fourth quarter when the Rockets abandoned the passing game and went solely with the Wildcat. 
and arguably one of the better offensive lines in high school oh, football yeah. in the state. They should be able to run the ball, and the Rangers put up a wall for a long part of that game until the end. Made just enough plays to win it, including that huge fourth and one stand inside the five-yard line. On second out and four, a pass is short hopped for a wide open receiver, Caleb Gonzalez. He ran a good route, but running not a good ball thrown. And now third down and four. Brett, you had five receivers out on that play, three on the left-hand side, so much that Zoig had to go out and cover one of the receivers. Mm -hmm. And you throw it to the short side of the field to a receiver we don't know very well because right. he hasn't played very much. Covered by a defensive back who's played all season long. I don't see that at all. I don't understand that. Third and four. Again, could be four down territory here for the Brothels and Redding on the run. Trying to cut it to the outside. Instead, he's cut down. Zuber there on the tackle along with Gibbons and Keeler. Fourth down at four. Minute to go in the half. Let's see what Coach Mangold decides to do. He's got trips left that time with an uncovered receiver in the middle. Right. They both went out and blocked, both the two outside guys. The middle guy's uncovered. Throw him the ball and let him run for five yards. Sometimes players are determined uh. to run the play itself and not wow. read the defense. Four down, three to go. New Braffles going for it. Running to throw. Flushed out. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Pierce the coverage. The receiver, Mitchell Black, had a chance to haul it in, but he dropped it. And the Rangers take over at their own 38, 35 seconds to go, still tied at seven. I'm not so sure that uh, Mr. Pierce didn't get a finger on that or something. because that, Maybe. He had a hand up, and the way he reacted, I thought he probably deflected it enough that that made it a really tough catch. In any event, the uh, Unicorn defense, or the Unicorn offense, falls to the Rangers defense, which ended up making the bigger play. And now good field position and enough time for the Rangers to do something here before halftime. Three timeouts left. From the 39, Williams to throw. Scrambles out to his right on the run. He will keep running. And what a run it is. Although he does stay in bounds, just shy of midfield of the 47. And that means Coach Hill will spend his first time out, 27 seconds to go. And the Rangers with second down and two coming up. Football protocol tells you the quarterback to run out of bounds there. Yes. Because you want to save the clock and mm -hmm. save your timeouts. Under 30 seconds to go, he knew they were going to have to use a timeout. Why not make this a second and two versus mm -hmm. a second and seven? Not a bad play by Levi Williams to scramble ahead in a two- or three-second moment to, and get an extra five yards. Oh, I like the play there by Williams. If you're in a situation where your timeouts are less than three, you know, even just two, you probably have to get out of bounds there. But, again, afforded the chance with those, th with those three timeouts in the holster to make that play. Somebody's going to have to make a big catch here. Levi's going to have to make a throw, mm -hmm. and somebody's going to have to make a catch down the field to have right. any chance to get it into the end zone, and I know that's their goal. It would be nice to get any points, but getting into the end zone would make a big statement, especially, as we mentioned, they get the ball to start the second half. If you think about field goal range for Mason Reed, his career long is 40. That would mean reaching the 23-yard line. On second and two, Williams, pump fake, spins to his left, Downfield strike is incomplete, nearly intercepted. A flag, a late flag comes in. And by the way, it was Marcus Riley, the defender, that almost got the pick from New Braunfels. And that play was thrown closer to Riley than it was to Woodard. As again, the flag thrown back at the 46. The timing of the flag leads me to believe this might be in the personal foul category here. Wow. And the Rangers are marching forward. This will come against New Braunfels. Didn't see an official signal the penalty, but it is 15 yards, Ranger first down. Well, the referee must have signaled it way early because he went and picked up his flag, and that's when I thought he was going to give us a signal, and still nothing. Boy, that is killer for New Braunfels. Oh, without a doubt. And now from the Unicorn, 38. Williams back to throw again. Going over the right side, tipped it incomplete. Bevel dropping back in the zone covers to get a hand on it. And now second to 10. Again, I've I'm, I'm been able tonight to see receivers a lot. 
Hunter was open about three seconds before Levi threw the ball. Mm-hmm. Levi's either – and it's hard to imagine because we're not out there close and mm-hmm. we, we don't hear coaches talking. Levi waited too long to throw that pass. Hunter made a nice look in about 10 yards down mm-hmm. the field, was wide open for a pass. By the time he threw it, three defenders surrounded him. 17 seconds left. Tied at seven in the second quarter. Williams on the keeper this time, and he has stood up at the 35. That didn't gain much. And the Rangers spin their second timeout, 11 seconds to go. And at the New Braunfels 35-yard line, there's not a lot the Rangers can do right now. Best hope now is either get a play to the end zone or a play that's at least 15 yards down the field so you can kick mm-hmm. a field goal with the one timeout you have left. Yes, they can use the middle of the field on this play. But you got to get a first down on this play. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I don't think you're going to kick a 50-yard field goal. No. And again, for that target area for Reed, the Rangers will need at least 12 more yards. Again, next week, Smithson Valley right back here at Ranger Stadium. Second year in a row, by the way, the Smithson Valley will open the postseason at home. Last year, a win over Warren punched their second-round ticket. This year, they will host either Jay or Brandeis. The Jay Mustangs or the Brandeis Broncos next week. Third down, seven yards. Third down, seven to go out of the timeout. At the New Braunfels 35. Here's a blitz. Williams going deep for Woodard, but got twisted around. Couldn't get to the football. That ball sailing incomplete in the end zone, and now seven seconds to go. And, Tony, we've mentioned that this is too far for a field goal. So, Hail Mary shot. You have a 6-2 receiver, Woodard, throw it his way. Hope he can make, make a play. Well, we've seen him throw to Woodard so many passes in a row here mm-hmm. on those scenarios, not, not continuous passes, but every time we've thrown long, it has been to Woodard. I thought Pierce looked open on a skinny post on the right side. Uh, we'll have to see. You get a first down here in less than seven seconds, you could kick a field goal. It's possible. Williams, though, going deep towards the end zone. Pass incomplete for Pierce. With one second to go. So this will be a turnover on downs. Football back to New Braunfels with one play left, barring a penalty in this half. What a weird first half. It is. And, and you know, we've seen Levi – be real sharp and some games not I don't know if he's sharp or not right now we've had so many passes that just haven't been close to the receiver when they've gone to the point and that was great coverage Mm -hmm. Uh, the cornerback just rode Pierce right out of bounds once the ball came close Uh, but there's not been many connections right now between the quarterback and the receivers a kneel down formation here for the Braunfels Redding will take the snap and the knee and 24 minutes in the books in the final game of the regular season and the 27-6A title still far from being decided. Your score after one half of play. Smithson Valley 7, New Braunfels 7. This is Smithson Valley football all on the Rangers Network. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Comal Independent School District. HEB. GVTC. Wick Productions. Ferris Orthodontics, Summer Hill Dental, Smoky Moe's Barbecue, and Pizza Hut. When you're ready for a break, hurry in to Chicken Express. Let us do all the cooking for you. We always offer high quality, affordable meals that the entire family will enjoy. Our chicken is never frozen and it's hand battered fresh so you can really taste the difference. You can expect fast and friendly service at Chicken Express whether you dine in, drive through, or drive up. Hurry in and hurry back to Chicken Express. NCAA Letter of Intent Signing Day for Volleyball and Baseball. And Ranger Gym was the site for celebrating four Rangers playing their sport at the next level. 
head volleyball coach Courtney Patton made the introductions for friends and families. We're incredibly proud of the journey that they've gone on and what they're fixing to do. Um, Lauren is going to be going to Eckerd College in Florida. <laughs> Maddie will be going to UTSA here in town. <laughs> Gabby will be going to St. Mary's also here in town. <laughs> and then Ethan will be going to Rogers State University for baseball. Expectations, I expect to, you know, get out there, just hustle, compete, and try to get that starting spot that freshman year. There's going to be uh, a lot of JUCO transfers there, so I have a lot of competition, and I'm hoping to start there next year. It's huge. It's huge. You know, we've, we've had them before. Um, you know, Ethan sat here last year and saw some of our guys sign. Um, you know, Garrett Egley, Ryan Jennings, uh, Cade Galvan, different guys going and signed before him. Um, it, it, it's big. Uh, there's guys back there behind him right now that are freshmen and sophomores that are seeing him sign in, signing. Um, and, and it's a goal. It's a goal of every baseball kid, I think, not just here at Smithson Valley, but who's ever put on a uniform uh, to have that opportunity to go play at the next level. You know, this is an incredibly successful program. It has been for a very long time. Um, all three of these young ladies were leaders for us on the floor. They were leaders for us um, in the locker room. They just, they believed in the journey. They believed in the process. Um, and they're just really, really good kids, so we're really proud of them for going on to that next level to continue to compete. Well, I have had the privilege of having two coaches, Coach Gumbert and Coach Patton, for this year, and they were absolutely wonderful. They made me the player I am today. They pushed me to limits that I didn't think I could push in workouts and in volleyball. And my teammates have always been there for me. They're always picking me up, and they just, like, keep you going when it's a hard workout. They're just the simplest thing of, oh, you got this, and just pushes you through the day. Um, the school was pretty ideal because it's close to my family and it had the major that I wanted, essentially, and it was just, you know, perfect fit for me. I'm really excited to move on with the next chapter of my life and just kind of keep going the way I'm going. There's 1,500 students there, so it's really, really small, which is kind of what I like coming from a big high school like this and then going down to a smaller school where um, I really like, I've sat in on a class in my visit this past weekend and it's really like professor student oriented. It's very personal. Ever since I called them on the phone, they've really just made it feel like we're going to take care of you. And even though it's like 2,000 miles away from here, it just feels like home. Congratulations to our Rangers. And remember to text the word Rangers to 42828 to receive stories like this on Rangers Network. <music>
Text, text your mamas. Yes. Right. <laughs> text your mamas. So I'm here today with Jake, Trayvon, Ricky, and Mason. How are y'all? Good. 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 So, um, Jake, tell me if you had a favorite movie quote. What is that? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really watch movies. No. No. Too busy playing football. Yeah, that's it. Anybody else? <laughs> favorite movie quote? You know, first your last. Ooh, that's, that's a good that's one. That's a great one. That's something to live by, right? Uh, Mama said, yeah, an alligator has all those teeth with no toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Is that off a water boy? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> Trayvon, if you could buy any one thing, what would you buy? I'd probably buy my mom anything she wanted. Oh, that's um, very nice. Would you, you wait, Trayvon, <laughs> would you buy it for her birthday? Um, yeah, I'd buy it anything. If I had if I had enough money, I'd buy her anything. And anything. when is your mom's birthday? August 5th. Oh, good job, Trayvon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So tell me, did you all study your mom's birthday before you got here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no? I just know I, it. I remember. Oh, I Ricky, it. you just knew it anyway. Yes. Good boy. I looked at Facebook. <laughs> I looked at Facebook. <laughs> so, Mason, if you're sad, what does your mom do to cheer you up? Uh, normally she'll get some sugar cookies and bake them for me. <laughs> that's nice, and that's the way to your heart? Yes. Yes. Cookies. And milk? Yes. Yes, and that does the job every time? Yes, ma'am. Well, there you go. Your mom's got that figured out. <laughs> so, Ricky, do you have any hidden talents? Um, I guess. What is it? Um, I like to play music. Yeah? And a couple of instruments. Oh, you do? What yeah. kind of instruments do you play? A guitar and a piano. Oh, wow. What kind of guitar? Acoustic. Very nice. Acoustic. And piano. Have you been playing that long? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I took a piano class freshman year, and then guitar I just picked up last Christmas. What's your favorite song to play? Um, uh, probably my own, my own song that I made. Oh, you write them too. Uh, not lyrics. Just notes. <laughs> just just notes? Yeah. Very cool. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I like yes. that. <laughs> Jake, can you recite Hey Diddle Diddle for me? Hey Diddle. I honestly have no idea what that is. I've never heard of that. You've in my never life. I've had the never rhyme, heard of it. Uh, the, the nursery rhyme, Trayvon? Never heard of it. <laughs> Y'all don't know diddle, diddle. nursery no. rhymes? Since y'all don't know it, you need to make up your own rhyme. So hey, I'm going to start you off. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Larry Hill jumped over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so, Mason, I heard that you can um, really do a good coach hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, I guess. Uh, you want me to just do it? Right? Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Man, we're back here for two days. <laughs> start to finish, we're here. We're gonna start finish in December. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> does he do that a lot, guys? Yes. Yeah. He, yes. Talks, uh, he, that. he gets on me about shaving. Yes. Well, I was gonna say when I saw you this morning, there was a little more of you. You must have yeah. hit the razor before you got yeah, in awesome, here. Awesome. <laughs> so, Ricky, what gave you nightmares when you were little? Um, girls. No, not <laughs> girls. Uh, actually, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so what actually what gave me nightmares was like dark Jedi's coming in my house. Oh, yeah, that's terrifying. a little. Yeah. I'm sure. Did you go wake your mom up or hide under the covers? No, I just got my lightsaber in. <laughs> 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 well, that makes sense. <laughs> Do y'all know what you call nachos that aren't yours? Nacho, Nacho cheese. cheese. Nacho Nacho cheese. cheese. Y'all know it. Nacho cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that one's like the most popular one. That's so good too. 
So, uh, why did the stadium get so hot? I don't know. Why did the stadium get so hot? Because all the fans left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why did the bicycle fall over? Why did the bicycle fall over? Because it was too tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I want to see how fast we can pass. You ready? And go! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good job! I think Coach Hill's going to be impressed. <laughs> and Jake, I heard you've got a cartoon character you're pretty good at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, do it again! I have to. <laughs> 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 Look at it from the side. Trayvon, do you have one? Um, do it, do it, do it. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Alright, probably goofy. Okay, let me hear it. Um, you know, goof. That's funny. Alright, no pressure, Ricky. Do you uh, have one? <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I do have one. You could just try any of them. Um, I don't really know any good SpongeBob. Josh Martinez, Garrett Snowden, and Sam Summer. And here comes the Ranger Marching Band for your entertainment tonight. Hope captains, Megan Barker, Tyler Gother, and Trinity Prophet. And now the Silver Spurs, Silverados, and their dance partners, along with feature corner, Sophie Gilbert. The Silver Spurs are being led onto the field tonight by Junior Lieutenants McKenna Bond, Kathleen Bratton, Vanessa Brown, Senior Lieutenants Lupe Garcia, and Valerie Rojo, First Lieutenant Sophia Fruits, and Colonel Henny Chamorro. The Silverados are being led onto the field tonight by Lieutenant Sage Dutton, Kendall Egley, and Faith Falcon, and Captain Lorna Luciano. The Silver Spurs and Silverados are under the direction of Director Action Burchell and Assistant Director Kayla Speaker. The spirit, dancer, the spirit Dancers of the Week are Allison Haynes with her brother Grant Haynes and Emma Zions with her mother Ms. Sanchez. The Dancers of the Week are Issa Wells and her dad, Mr. Wells, and A.J. Gonzalez with her dance partner, Karen Coyne. And this evening, the Silver Spurs will be performing in a team to We Go Together. The 2017-2018 Silver Spurs Social Board Officers are Presidents Allison Haynes and Caitlin Senelis, Social Officers Ainsley McMillan, Alexi Miller, and Sidney Rostep, and Chaplain Maddie Ford.
tonight. The Ranger Band will be performing a portion of their 2017 UIL show entitled Revolution. The show will feature music from Chester and the Broadway musical Les Mis.
And then again, they're playing the Smithson Valley Marching Band. The half, your score, Smithson Valley 7, New Prothville 7. Halftime coverage continues. This is Smithson Valley Football on the Rangers Network. I'm Jaime Buenteo, produce buyer for HEB. We work hard to find the freshest, best produce available. That's why we work with Texas growers to buy local as much as possible, over 100 million pounds annually. In fact, we sell more produce than any other store in Texas. Grapefruit, corn, blueberries, and tons more all grown right here in our beautiful backyard and on their way to your store within 24 hours. This is the local Texas Produce Department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. My passion is working with high school seniors. I really love being able to make them feel comfortable in front of the camera and express their personality so that their parents and themselves can have some beautiful images, keepsakes that really commemorate this milestone in their life. Oh, that's working good. All right, CJ. I put uh, together a consultation prior to the session with the parent and the senior so we can really talk about um, their personality, their, uh, their likes, some of their activities that they are involved in at school so that we can really kind of bring out that confidence and that comfortableness in front of the camera that can really express who that senior really is. So Jennifer, thank you for being here with me today. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is you do? Well, I'm a portrait artist located here in the New Braunfels, Smithson Valley area, and I specialize in creating home decor for your house that has your images in it. I'm pretty good at my iPhone and taking some really neat pictures, but I've been looking at these shots you have, and they look like they're straight out of a magazine. How, how'd you learn how to do this? Well, I actually went to school and got a degree uh, in photography and have continued my education throughout the years, um, really wanting to hone in on how to make people look their absolute best in front of the camera. I also have um, a professional camera and lens, lenses um, that I use um, that you don't necessarily have on your iPhone. Um, to really make things look incredible. I also take lighting sometimes on set uh, and also reflectors so that I can really manipulate the light um, to really get that effect that I'm looking for. So I heard in 2016 there was kind of a big deal. You were featured in a magazine. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, uh, Senior Style Guide is a national uh, competition and they have a magazine that comes out every year and I was one of their Hot 100 photographers. I got featured in there with one of my images it was really an amazing honor to have. So with so many amazing uh, portraits that you've taken, how do parents just narrow it down to that one special picture to send out on, on graduation invitations? Well, uh, because my graduation invitations are two-sided, we can put a couple of different images on there, but one of the things that I have um, recently incorporated into my, um, my work is doing living portraits where we are incorporating films or, or videos of my clients during the session where they can actually scan the image on the card with an app on their phone and then they can actually watch the film right there. Oh wow, so yeah. grandma and grandpa that live out of state can really see their whole session. They can not only see the session with the still images, we incorporate video where that's actually them uh, laughing and just really showing their expression and personality throughout the living, the, the, the video moments. I didn't even know that was possible. That's pretty amazing. It's a pretty new technology and I'm super excited to get to do it for my clients here. So I know portraits can be a bit of an investment. What do you do to help make this affordable? Well, you know, I really want everyone to uh, 
be able to get every image that they absolutely love from the portrait sessions that I uh, create for them. So I have uh, come up with a plan to do payment, a payment option if anyone uh, so chooses to take advantage of that because I do really think that it's something that only comes around once in a lifetime, especially as a senior, um, and it, you're never going to look probably any better than you do when you're a high school senior. <laughs> and um, you know, I just want people to be able to cherish those memories of their children. I truly believe what I do is a wonderful service for my clients, that they're able to hand these images down, the albums and tangible products that they can show their children, their children's children, and it really becomes a piece of history that they're able to keep for their family. For more information on Jennifer Wilson, you can visit her website at www.silver-plate.com. Have you rushed your tea? Moms, we've got you covered. Bring your kids to Summerhill Dental, no matter how often they say they brush their teeth. And welcome back to Ranger Stadium. Still tied seven apiece as we get ready to start the second half. On the Rangers Network, Brain Freeman with Tony Brubaker. And, and Tony, that first half, the Brothels got off to a pretty good start, both offensively and defensively. The Rangers got their answer early second quarter, but after that, all defense both ways. Well, neither team has amassed a whole lot of offense. I think the Unicorns have about 190 yards of offense. The Rangers 110 yards. Uh, the difference has been really their average per play is about five and a half yards, and the Rangers' average per play is three and a half yards. Uh, neither team has generated a whole lot of offense. Uh, this has been a defensive battle, but it's also been a strange football game because certain things you expect to happen haven't happened. Levi Williams has not been sharp throwing the ball, five of 15 early, and their ability to run the ball as their quarterback Redding has been something we haven't seen any quarterback do at length this season. We should note though that Smith Valley will get the football to start the third quarter. The Rangers had a shot at points towards the end of the second quarter, but could not quite finish off a drive, ending on a turnover on downs at around the New Braunfels 35-yard line. Everybody up for the kickoff. Smith Valley will stack their two returners back deep, two different sizes of them. Nick Aiken at 5'9", 160, and hiding behind him, I use that term loosely, is Trevon Merrick Woodard. Woodard at 6'2", 195. Gives away to Aiken on the return from the 25 and good New Braunfels pursuits as Aiken, who had a good return earlier in the game, called back due to hold, is taken down to the 31-yard line. Tackled by number one, Bryson Dyer. So the Rangers, after putting up 40 against Judson last week, held to seven points in the first half against a unicorn defense, which is giving up more than 25 points per game this season. But again, as Tony and I talked about earlier, they've been playing better defense as of late. And on first down, Williams operates from his own 31. And calls for motion from Adorzo Hunter, the tight end. And they will throw a screen to Pierce, a block from Hunter, and almost broke a tackle for a long way. Instead, dragged out of the 44-yard line for a first down. Nice job on the setup there as Pierce made a nice catch and a nice read off of Hunter's block. Uh, a good gain on first down. It'd be nice to see the Rangers put something together here early in the second half, get some momentum going forward. Just the second catch tonight for Mason Pierce. Levi Williams only 6 of 16 passing this evening after a great game last week on first down. A pass here is caught by Woodard. A block from Gilliam on the outside and... Woodard's got another first down to the New Braunfels 41. So two identical plays on the first two plays of the second half, each to either side of the field, and a couple of first downs for the Rangers. And that one good for 15 yards. Rangers off to a good start here in the third quarter. They've been a good third quarter team this season. Now scoring their opponents by 62 points. These middle quarters have been 
when the Rangers have put games away. From the 41, a flip to Aiken, who gets a block from Cervantes, another block from Woodard, out of bounds, near the 30-yard line, and a flag in. And they're going to get Cervantes, I think, and a block of the back here. For the time being, a first down. But this one's going to come back. A little bit of a powwow with our officials as, again, our referee makes the call. Brock Pittman, our head official here tonight. I think they're going to wave it off. They will. Yeah. So the run stands there for Aiken. And again, live, I know we're a little biased here. thought it was a good block by Cervantes. The Rangers march forward. It was not a first down, though, as they do mark it at the Unicorn 33. Good for eight yards, second down and two. And that's where the Rangers go to work. Here's a handoff to Aiken. Skirts outside, turns her corner. And may have been a block away from busting that one for a touchdown. Instead, settles for a first down at the Unicorn 23-yard line. Another great play fake by Levi Williams, who carried out the fake well after he handed the ball out. Uh, good job of Nick to bounce that one outside, too, because that's where all the space was. The Rangers have run the football effectively tonight as a team approaching 100 yards on the night. And also approaching the red zone right now at the Unicorn 23. There's motion from Pierce. And a passing play for Williams. On the run, throws a laser right to Pierce. Out of bounds, out to 10. First and goal, Swisson Valley. Pierce, the man in motion, just took it up the field and did an out route with Williams moving to his left. Another strike by Levi Williams that we haven't seen enough of tonight. But a penalty marker back the line of scrimmage. This one might come back. And yes, a five-yard flag brings it back to the 29. Again, though, we didn't see the signal. Did you see a signal? Really quick, man. Brock Pittman doesn't waste any time getting that call out. Five-yard penalty, who did, I mean, strange situation. Maybe illegal shift as Pierce was coming in motion. Turned up the field too quickly? I think so. And now Coach Hill with the play clock winding down. Burns his first, second half timeout. Big drive. We talked about this at yes. the start of the drive. Yep. Really would be great to get a touchdown on the board and put some pressure on their offense versus pressure being on your defense. Again, the Rangers coming in 8-1 and one on the year. 5-1 in 27-6A play with the win. They are the outright 27-6A champs. And you think about just how tough this district has been over the previous three years. I know realignments every two years, but the district is essentially the same. The only change two years ago was the addition of East Central. A district with Judson, Steele, Clemens, these unicorns. Winning this district is not an easy task. And the Rangers, if they can pull this one out, they can say they've accomplished something pretty special. I think there's without a doubt um, District championships are never easy no matter what district you're in. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a tough one, to come out victorious is a, is a really big deal. And we saw a wonderfully played game yesterday for the 28-6A title. O'Connor and Brandeis came down to overtime, a 44-41 O'Connor win. O'Connor and Brennan, make your part, not Brandeis. First and 15 out of the timeout, Williams will throw off the play fake to Woodard. Trying to break a tackle. And it takes three unicorns, make it four to bring them down to the 20-yard line. The Rangers pick up eight, and now second down and about seven to go. Knowing you had two or three plays to get a first down, that's a good chunk on first down, and that's a good uh, offensive uh, situation moving the chains. Boy, Woodard is such a tough player to bring down. First contact almost never does the job. Second down, seven to go from the Brothels 20. Here's the blitz. Aiken runs right into it and tripped down. The blitzing player come again, Colson Clark. Had him dead to rights, and now the Rangers face with third down at about 14. 
So just as you get near to being in a good position on the change, you're back behind third and long. Mm -hmm. seven on the play. Curious if this is four down territory. No one field goal puts you up by three, but a touchdown would really make a big deal for you. I think it depends what happens on right. third down. Yeah. Again, the range for Reed is 40 yards out. That would require four more yards from this spot. Third and 14. New Proffles bringing a four-man rush this time. Williams pressured, steps up, and sacks by Farley Bevel. Third sack this year. All the way back to the 32 to bring up fourth down and long to go. And the Rangers will send out the punting unit. Fourth and 19 from the 32. So a promising drive after a killer penalty. The Rangers will punt the football back to the Unicorns. Again, remember, Mason Pierce had a catch the 10-yard line called back due to a flag. Anderson trying to hand the Unicorns inside the 20-yard line. And that ball will take a Ranger roll. Sent out of bounds by Chubb and Anderson. Does pin the Unicorns back deep. That is the, gosh, third, fourth, really good punt by Anderson tonight. This one, ideal that he got the ball to land softly, and Chubb was there quickly to usher it out of bounds. And the Unicorns have a long way to go if they're going to uh, do anything good on this drive. They've got 97 yards of real estate in front of them. Four minutes gone by, third quarter, still tied at seven apiece. Our score since about the 10 minute mark of the second quarter. We've mentioned high scoring quarters this year for the Rangers. For the Unicorns, this third quarter has been their best this season. A run on first down for Piali Thomas and he has stood up, stacked up, out around the four, held to a yard gain, second down and nine. The Brothels has been a great second half offense this year. They have scored 193 points after halftime, 121 coming in the third quarter alone. And that rivals the biggest corner of the year for Smithson Valley. Right. Second out of nine from their own four. And here is Ryan Redding, first third quarter pass on the way. Pressured, flushed out, throws the ball away. And there we saw Trey Witcher in pursuit. He's not the biggest E tackle. In fact, probably one of the smaller ones you'll see. 5'10, 215, but he's been a playmaker all year. And Alex Flores, one of the players that uh, has kind of been in and out of the lineup with different things, mm -hmm. uh, got in there as well. Uh, him of the uh, quarterback pressure from a year ago had a lot of those. He did. This year has been slowed down by a lot of different things, but that time got in there quickly as well. This would be a huge three and out yeah, for the Ranger defense. Out. Third and nine from the four. Passing down for DuPronville's low snap and running is punished. He was lucky just to get the ball out beyond the goal line. And now DuPronville's will be punting from deep at his own end zone. And that was Alex Flores. A normal defensive end was playing defensive tackle on that uh -huh. play. He was left. It, it, interior tackle was left unblocked on the play and ran Ow. right into the running back. Ow. Somebody missed a block. It didn't help that Caden Kiesling's snap to his quarterback Redding was poor. And now the punter, Dalen Welsh Lavender, with his heels on the back of the end zone and a oh. high snap gets over his hands and a gift wrap two point safety for Smithson Valley. <laughs> You know, as deep as he was, you, you kind of thought with any snap that's high, he might step back and get a safety out of it. They made it easy by just snapping it over his head. So two consecutive poor snaps from center has given the Rangers their first lead tonight. On top, 9-7, 6.42 to go here in this third quarter. You know, it's, it's, and now, Tony, talk about game momentum, right? Your Broncos' offense goes three and out. Special teams gives up a couple of points. The Rangers offensively, if they can piece together a touchdown scoring drive, they're going to make life really difficult in the brothels for the, remain, for the remainder of the game. I think I would agree with you wholeheartedly. I, 
thought the Rangers' first drive was a big one for momentum's sake. And mm -hmm. now while they weren't able to score on it, they were able to pin the Unicorns back. The defense made a big play. Special teams got a couple of points out of it. Now any kind of return on this puts you in good field position for an opportunity to score again. You know, it's been a long time since we've seen a 9-7 to seven game. It really, it really has been. We saw a 14-9 game that the Rangers won a couple of weeks ago over Canyon. Everybody up for the kickoff. And now on the free kick, the Brothels will elect to kick off the tee from the 20. Aiken and Woodard awaiting back deep. Both very dangerous. And it is Woodard. And here we go from the 32. Woodard has a block, stumbles his way down to the 49. Before Pierce brings him down for DeBronville. 6.37 to go, third quarter, 9-7. Rangers on top. You go back to the bad snap on the punt. If you recall last week, how close were the Rangers to giving up a safety on a bad snap against Judson? That is correct. It was when the Rangers got that fourth, fourth down stop. But the silver lining for the Rockets was the Rangers had to go a long way. The ball at the four-yard line. A bad snap from Alex Schaefer went off the hands of Levi Williams in the end zone right to Nick Aiken. If he's not there, it either would have been a touchdown or a safety for, for Judson as Mason Pierce runs it out of the 48 and first down for a three-yard gain, second down and seven. And let's not lose sight of the fact that Woodard just had about a 20-yard return, a little bit less than that, but you're at midfield. It's just the, the, the benefits of getting a safety in the scenario right. where, again, they try kicking it off a tee versus a punt where sometimes coverage could be better. Uh, but the Rangers really set themselves up. This is an opportunity they need to take advantage of. Mark Franco in the backfield here on second down and seven. Hunter, the tight end, comes in motion. A throw to Pierce, a block from Hunter, and squeezes his way to the 43 before Bevel, another That's tackle, by the way, makes a stop. At the 44, gain of four yards, third and three coming up for a Ranger offense which has been lacking rhythm so far tonight. I couldn't agree with you more. I think the real neat thing about what they're trying on some of these receiver screens is having Hunter be in the blocker, mm -hmm. which we know to be one of the better receiver blockers on this football yes. team. Six feet, 195, and a great target on third to short throughout the year as well. The Broncos nearly jumped but got back on the right side of the defensive line. Play clock winding down for Williams. He will keep it himself and runs right into the Brunfels defense. That play appeared to be doomed from the start. Coming up, Timothy Croner and Nolan Scribner for the Brunfels. And after the Rangers get a safety and great field position, the offense goes three and out. You know, coaches do self-scouts many times to make sure you don't have too many usual tendencies. Levi Williams running up the middle on Third and short is mm -hmm. something that I think the Rangers have done a lot of this season, and the Unicorns just sold out on that play. Anderson's punt, a good one last time out. Fair catch called for and made by Clark at the nine-yard line. And right now, one of the heroes for the Rangers in this game has been Brant Anderson, their punter. <laughs> he has, and another punt that, you know, inside the 20, which is the goal of every punter, in uh, that kind of territory, and he's done it again, and the Unicorns have a long field ahead of them. Redding and the Unicorns went three and out on their last offensive possession. They scored their second drive of the game, a drive aided by a long run by Redding of 72 yards from their own nine. Redding on the keeper, angling towards the secondary. And picks up about nine yards on first down to the 23 yard or the 17-yard uh, line. Baker part second down and one. Defensive again being called upon to make big plays. This would be a great opportunity for another stop since you haven't been able in two different drives to produce any points off of those drives. The defense again being called upon to keep field position in favor of the Rangers. Neither offense has had an easy goal with tonight. They've had a tough time keeping drives alive. Combined on third down, four for 20. 
between these two teams. And here is Redding on second down, and he is slung down. But a first down, the 23-yard line on a gain of five. Kind of interesting, we've seen so many holding calls tonight, and that time I think it was Gibbons who was rushing in and turned to spin and go after right. Redding and had his jersey grabbed, and he was unable to spin away. We've seen so many holding calls, but didn't see one there. Under four minutes remaining, third quarter, tight game. Defensive slugfest so far. Rangers on top, 9-7. And now first and 10 for DeBronfels at their own 22. Running against the Blitz will throw a completion to Steele. Out across the 30, there flag is. is in. And Steele is not Steele. Beg your pardon, Blake feigned the catch, but it's all coming back anyway on a hold against DeBronfels. I think it, I'm not real sure which one of our defensive backs tried to spin and go after that receiver was just actually tackled by the offensive receiver on that play, and that's why the holding call will bring this one back. And this is one of the bigger reasons why neither offense has had a chance to establish a rhythm. It seems like every big play they get, that chunk play where maybe you think, all right, here's where the, the ball gets going, a holding call brings it right back. New Braunfels has not crossed midfield in this second half. And now the ball marked all the way back to their own 12-yard line. Redding on first and 21. Back to throw. Quick route and a catch by Steele off of the races and forced out of bounds by Chubb. That was a dangerous development there for the Rangers. Great job by Chubb to get over and end that play, play as quickly as possible. And they'll mark him out of the 26-yard line to set up second down and six to go. Dangerous is right. If Chubb isn't there, that play could have gone for a long way. Yeah. Tanner Steele, by the way, has been banged up all year long. Has only played at about four games, but looking pretty good so far tonight. On second to six, a designed run for running into traffic. Breaking a couple of tackles and dropped as the flag comes in again. Late flag here as running was taken down by Zuber at the 39-yard line. Not sure if that was holding or just a personal foul for unsportsmanlike conduct. My body language says this is going to be against the Unicorns as the officials huddle over the football and talk things over. Could be a big call in the game. It's against the Bronfels for another hold. It's uncanny. How many holds have there been in this game? <laughs> Nine? I mean, it, Wait, the number is up there. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about football. There could be holding called on every play, but some right. of these, some of these are such, such obvious situations. There have been a, there have been seven official penalties, accepted penalties in this game for 72 yards, and I'm going to guess that at least six of them have been holds. Clock ticking under three minutes to go. Third quarter, 16 combined points so far tonight. Not what we thought coming in. On first down, Redding on the quarterback keeper. Dropped by Witcher. After a small gain, maybe a couple of yards there. Second down, eight to go. New Braunfels, a 3-0 start of their season. But running into some tough district competition, losses to the heavyweights, Judson by 42, Steele by 23, last week to Clemens by 10, and now out of the playoff race. Weren't we at second and 21 a minute ago before that penalty? How did we get back to first down? They're saying that the hold occurred after he'd established first down yardage. Okay, okay. On second to seven, and Redding will throw the football away. Okay. Now to bring up third down and seven, Tony, was that was the most diplomatic way I, I could uh, describe that. You're absolutely correct. Wait, that, uh, that is the correct yeah. call. It just it puzzled me. We were back again, 15 yards right. back further from where we were, mm -hmm. and yet it was first down again. 
But a big third down coming up here for both teams. For the Rangers, if they get a stop, mm -hmm. could set up the offense with good field position. For the Broadfalls, a chance to keep the driver alive and keep the Rangers offense on the sidelines. Very tense game so far. On third and seven, running to throw. Pressured, steps up, and he is hit oh. by Pow Pow. And Pow Pow, he brings him down to the 24-yard line. The sack there for the big man, and the Rangers defense gets a stop. You know, it's funny because you get looking at the receivers down the field. If he had time, he probably would have unleashed it to one of his guys that were beyond midfield and had a chance to make a big play. Well, Good. think about what this game would be like if a playoff berth was on the line. Yeah. And again, if Smithson Valley does not beat Judson last week, that's what this game would have been. Woodard on the fair catch at the 44-yard line. Following a short punt by Lavender, the Rangers the football a two-point lead as we approach the end of the third quarter. You and I both sit here knowing that if this team doesn't score a touchdown pretty quick, this game's going to be way too close in the oh, fourth yeah. quarter. Yep. And boy, has Smithson Valley played in some down-to-the-wire games this year. The opener, a four-point win, pulling it out with eight seconds to go against Hendrickson. Of course, the six-point loss to Clemens here about three weeks ago, a five-point win at Canyon in last week's classic in overtime over Judson. From the 43, Williams hands off to Aiken. Powers up to midfield. Nice seven-yard run. On the first play of this possession, second down and three now coming up. You know, you like the way Nick Aiken runs because he's got those quick feet that are always moving. That time looked a little bit better than we'd seen him run the ball a couple times earlier in this half. Seemed to have a little more freedom on the start and looked better running the ball. Should note that Rado Ball is checked back in at receiver here on second and three. It is a run for Aiken, though, and how about that run? You talk about the quick feet, Tony. How about the upper body burst there by Aiken for the first down to the DeBroffles 45? Did a nice job running over a defensive back as well. Under 40 seconds remaining third quarter. It's amazing. DeBroffles coming in offensively, averaging 38 points. The Rangers 36 points. Here we are with 12.30 to go in the game. 9-7 Rangers on top. It's not a pitcher's duel, that's for sure. No. On first and ten, run play for Aiken and stumbles awkwardly a bit. Second time we've seen a Ranger slip tonight. Aiken pops back up, and that the final play of the third quarter. So the Rangers count down to a district title, now down to 12 minutes on top, 9-7. And they again are 12 minutes away for the 27-6A crown, but New Braunfels not going away quietly. Start of the fourth quarter coming up. This is Smithson Valley Football on the Rangers Network. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Comal Independent School District, HEB, GVTC, WIC Productions, Ferris Orthodontics, Summer Hill Dental, Smoky Moe's Barbecue, and Pizza Hut. Flimsy microwave bacon tastes, but Wendy's oven baked bacon tastes. Add it to fresh, never frozen beef, and you've got a Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. A JBC with four nuggets, fries, and a drink is what makes Wendy's 4 for 4 so deliciously de Welcome back to Ranger Stadium for what has been three yards and a cloud of dust kind of football tonight. Rangers on top as we open the fourth quarter, 9-7. to seven. And face with second and 11 from the Dubrofels, 46 off a play fake. Raider ball, the catch, wow. the sophomores got it. Down to the 19-yard line, but another flag thrown. However, it looks like, yeah, it's going to come back. A legal receiver downfield for the Rangers as the New Braunfels defender on the play, Luke Simpson, with his helmet off, and he is yet to get up. Illegal receiver downfield, kind of a different 
scenario to see mm -hmm. that play on, on a drop back pass. But uh, that did appear to be the call from uh, Mr. Pittman. And the Rangers uh, lose an opportunity for a big pass play. And as they look at him, we will step aside. 11.54 to go, fourth quarter. Rangers on top, 9-7. This is Smith Valley Football on the Rangers Network. I'm Jaime Buenteo, produce buyer for HEB. We work hard to find the freshest, best produce available. That's why we work with Texas growers to buy local as much as possible, over 100 million pounds annually. In fact, we sell more produce than any other store in Texas. Grapefruit, corn, blueberries, and tons more, all grown right here in our beautiful backyard and on their way to your store within 24 hours. This is the local Texas produce department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. How can 11 girls go missing? No suspect was identified. There's an inmate. He has confessed murdering 11 girls, but he's retracted his confessions. Who is this guy? Ed, what happened? <laughs> Watch A&E, GVTC, Digital Cable Channel, 558, GVTC, just plain smart. Snoring, sleep apnea, teeth grinding, daytime tiredness. It's time to solve the problem. Dr. Matt Bayless and Summerhill Dental are right here in the Spring Branch Bolverde community and can help you stop snoring without the use of loud, uncomfortable machines. Summerhill Dental is your partner in getting a better night's sleep tonight. Our appliances are a proven solution to stop snoring and sleep apnea. No CPAP, no surgery. Log on to SummerhillDental.com or call Dr. Bayless today. Tom Brady, that's a mic drop. This is football. How it is. Back to action, 11.42 to go out of the injury timeout. Fourth quarter, Rangers a ball up 9-7 to seven and a running play on second down in 16 following a flag on, a on an illegal receiver downfield against Smithson Valley. And that run doesn't yield a lot. A couple of yards up to the 49-yard line. Third and 14 now coming out for Smithson Valley. And again coming out of the timeout, an injury stoppage for Luke Simpson. Of New Braunfels, take it back to the sidelines. Third and 14. Back to throw Williams. Here's the pressure going over the middle for Rada Ball. Flag is in on the pass that failed, that uh, sailed incomplete. And Rada Ball, the big target, 6'2, 175, draws a penalty to keep this drive alive. Pass incomplete. There is a penalty on the play. It was a definite penalty as the defensive back just ran. Uh, the receiver off and gave him no chance to catch the ball, so an easy flag on that one. And in a game featuring so many offensive drive-killing flags, this against the defense to keep this Ranger drive moving. Smithson Valley looking for some separation right now, and a touchdown with an extra point would make it a two-possession lead. From the Unicorn 34, Williams goes to work. Hands off to Franco. Trying to bounce it to the outside, and he is denied. How about that defensive pursuit by New Braunfels? Blowing it up there is Clark. Also there, Riley, the safety. Second down and 13. We have seen any player that tries to bounce something out has not had much success. No. Their outside defense, their safeties and linebackers have not given up much on the edge tonight. And this is a New Braunfels rush defense, which has given up a ton of yards this year. But playing really well tonight, really all phases. Second and 13, play fake, and a screen for Woodard, and a block, breaks a tackle. There he goes, inside the five to the end zone for his second touchdown tonight. That is unbelievable. That play did not look like it was going to be a touchdown, if not for the toughness of Mr. Woodard. Now 13 receiving touchdowns on the year for Woodard. Two tonight. And that one gives the Rangers some breathing room, but now a chance to make it a two possession lead 
and they will send out Mason Reed for a nine point advantage. An important kick here, and it is good. Smithson Valley on top, 16 to seven, 10 17 left fourth quarter. This is Smithson Valley football on the Rangers Network. It's Flea Market Madness. Wow, that's pretty neat. Two teams, here's your $500, here's your time clock. Let's go shop, go, go. Go find great things that you can reinvent. I think you have a great idea. Please work. You never know what you're gonna find. Do you need a hand? Flea Market Flip, Sunday night at eight, only on GAC. Watch Great American Country, GVTC Digital Cable Channel 162, GVTC, just plain smart. Flimsy microwave bacon tastes, but Wendy's oven baked bacon tastes. Add it to fresh, never frozen beef and you've got a junior bacon cheeseburger. A JBC with four nuggets, fries and a drink is what makes Wendy's 4-4 so deliciously and welcome back to Ranger Stadium. Second touchdown tonight for Trevon Merrick Woodard from 37 yards away on the screen play. Rangers on top 16 to seven. So a 37 yard and 34 yard touchdown tonight for Woodard. Only two touchdowns for the Rangers this evening. And here is Reed's kickoff. A line drive. Take it at the one, out to the 15, and Joey Thomas dragged down at the 20 by Zuber. Zuber, I swear, might have 200 tackles by night's end. On the season coming in, 113, and it just seems like any play, he's in on it. But, but think about the fact that they get three playoff games. He could get to 200. He could. At he's going to be over 125 tonight, maybe 130. Well, 37 tackles the previous two games coming in. Seven times this year, 10 tackles or more, and that will be eight by game's end. And yet you said it, Tony, the Rangers go three, four rounds deep. He'll get there to 200. From their own 20, DeBroffel's desperate now, down by nine. And Redding on the play fake, snuffed out. Elliot. Patrick Elliott's. Well, he came in so fast. Almost looked like he came in unblocked. Now second down and long. You know, we saw it when Flores uh, stopped their running back on the goal line. Their offensive line is all of a sudden not blocking real well. We do know their starting center, Caden Kiesling, is out, which has really put a crimp in what they've been doing successfully on that line in previous games. So they've got at least one backup on that offensive line and maybe more. Not sure why you'd bite at a play fake when you're up by nine. At this stage of the game, from their own 14, and Redding back to throw, pressured, gets out of a sack for a moment, got away from Keeler. Not many quarterbacks can say that as Redding will cut his losses and toss it away, and now third and 16 coming up for New Braunfels. Again, to go back to the first two drives of the game. The Unicorns looked really good offensively since then. They have gotten nothing offensively. And we've seen that in so many games this year. We talked about it when it happened. Early on, people have some success as the Ranger defense just kind of looks and investigates and sees what's happening. Once they realize what's going on, they make the key adjustment or two or three. And uh, this unicorn offense, which was running recklessly early for lots of yards, hasn't done so much lately. New Braunfels already battling from being downhill right now, down by nine and now third and 16. Rutting back to throw, slings it deep for Steele, turns and no, can't make the catch. In fact, nearly picked off by Pierce. Look at the size difference there. Tanner Steele, 6'3", Pierce, 5'10", but you wouldn't know it watching that play. That is an SEC defensive back right there. There was all kinds of contact. The offensive player almost more than the defensive player. They let them play and Pierce made the better play on it. And now Woodard back to return the punt here from Dallin Wilch Lavender. Had a punt early in the game, go over his head, out of bounds, or out of the back of the end zone for a wow. touchback. And the Unicorns had too many men on the field. And this will back it up five more yards. A well, number 11 had run out onto the field thinking he belonged there because they not. were short. And he gets there and his teammates, uh, and let me just, 
promise you, a coach sent him onto the field. His teammate said, no, you don't. And as he leaves the field, obviously you can't do that. And it's a five-yard mark-off. That was Hayden Kesserling coming off late. And here is Lavender's punt. Right to Woodard from the 46. Running outside. Has two touchdowns already tonight. Receiving reverses field. And it will take three unicorns to bring him down. And a late flag in. And I mean way late. Right around the 38-yard line. Wouldn't think this would be a hold because no, of the timing of the flag and where it was thrown. I'd say maybe not a late hit, but just unsportsmanlike because I think they kind of jumped over him or on him. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to wave it off. They will. The, there was a player who came in late, but I thought he missed him when he jumped mm -hmm. over the top of him. And I think the flag might have been in that scenario, but they waved it off because there wasn't contact. And the Rangers less than nine minutes away from the 27-6A crown on top 16-7 to with 8.57 to go. First and 10 for the Rangers at the 38. From the unicorn 38, run play for Franco, finding his way down to the 34-yard line. Good four-yard gash there. Second down and six. Let's talk about that offensive line again of Clifton Bauer, Schaefer, Hausler, and Copney. They've been doing yeoman's work all night tonight. And again, we've run the ball successfully up the middle where you don't expect to see a lot of yards against a defense that's been as active as New Braunfels, but they're starting to make some headway right now with some good blocks. On second down and six, one again for Franco. Had a steam down to the 27-yard line. How about back-to-back -back runs there by Mark Franco? That's that left guard, John Bauer, 6'1", 230 senior, has pulled twice in a row on a little trap influence and uh, allowed the running back to get through that hole quickly. Rangers nursing a nine-point lead and approaching the red zone right now. New Braunfels game for about two and a half quarters, but now the game slipping away. From the 27 on first down. And whistles, timeout called for by Coach Hill. With 7.50 remaining, Rangers on top 16 to seven. Let me just tell you how important that timeout was because it's the second one Coach Hill has called here in the second half and still eight minutes to go. There was some confusion there. Hunter, who went from the backfield to the left tight end, not real sure he wanted to go there, not real sure he was supposed to go there. And whatever the scenario was, I think before the Unicorns got into a bad play on first down, he thought he'd talk about it and let's – Let's secure this drive and put this game away with a touchdown here. By the way, if the Rangers can hold on, it would be their 13th district championship under coach Larry Hill, and this is 25th year, and their first since 2013. If you recall, they made the change of classifications, changing six man to 1A, 1A to 2A, and so forth. This would be the Rangers' first district title as a 6A football program. Technically. Technically, yes. We know that this bunch of 5A teams used to be right. that are now 6A teams. But, yes, it is their first as a 6A program. If they can hold on. On top by nine. Under eight minutes to go in the game. From the 27. Run for Franco again. Oh. Fumbles the football. On the ground and jumping on it for the Rangers. Jesse Clifton. That was a dangerous bounce of the ball. If there's a Braunfels unicorn player in space, that could be going the other way instead in second and 12. Dangerous, dangerous. Franco hasn't been one to put it on the ground a lot this year, but that one where he must have got a helmet on the ball that he had tucked in nicely, but it scored it out like it was a watermelon just popping up into the air. Again, the Rangers have been a bit sloppy with the football the previous three weeks. Seven turnovers in games against Clemens Canyon and Judson on second and 12. Keeper this time for Franco stood up by Scribner. Nice body on the defensive line, 6'3", 210. And now with that tackle forces the Rangers into a third down and 12 situation. Rangers appear to be just outside the cusp of Mason Reed's field goal range from here. 
kind of a scenario, what do you do here? It's third and 12, not really many running plays that can get that mm -hmm. for you, but how much do you want to throw the ball and put it into a situation where uh, you could get picked off? No Woodard on the field here on third and 12. Rangers have to reach a 17 for a first down. Oh. Here's a pass to Hunter, incomplete. Running that flag right out towards the five yard line. And now fourth down and 12 coming up as we approach the halfway point of the fourth quarter. What a great route by Dorsal Hunter. He goes out like he's gonna block for a, a wide receiver screen and yep. just slips the screen like you see in basketball. He was out in the open, we just missed him on that one. And the offense stays on the field. On fourth and 12. Pierce, way to ball. Are your receivers here? On fourth and 12. Back to throw Williams. Here's a blitz over the middle for Pierce. And there's interference. They'll call it against Andrew Sauceda. And this will keep the Ranger drive alive on another P.I. called against the Unicorns. And it really wasn't necessary. He arrived no. early and slapped him in the back of the helmet, it looked like to me. And just one of those where a good coverage allows you to knock that ball down. I don't know why that penalty happened. His positioning was great. Was right there on top of Pierce, but the timing to bat the ball away was off. As a result, the Rangers will continue to drive inside the red zone as they sort out the flag and the yardage. And now you would think the Rangers are 15 yards away from icing this game and taking home the 27-6A crown. So again, penalty flags doing a lot to determine how good drives are. Yeah. This one helps a drive where previous ones have hurt it. Empty backfield here for the junior quarterback, Williams, standing at 6-3 on first down. He will call his own number and charges up to the nine. That's good for six, staying ahead of the chains and keeping the clock moving as well. Second and four for the Rangers following that run by Williams. Be interesting to see if they keep the ball on the ground here, Brant, and can run it in, mm -hmm. or if they're gonna have to go to the air as we switch some receivers in and out. Spoke about this all-time series earlier. When it began, it was on to Braffles. Unicorns won seven of the first day, but since then, the Rangers have won eight of the last nine. Only one new Braffles win over Smithson Valley since 1995, as Williams takes a second down play to about the seven. It's good for two more yards. Third down and two now coming up. And the clock continues to move here in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. That's a really good thing for the Rangers. Uh, fake the jet sweep there to uh, Mason Pierce, which has been so efficient around the red zone. He's had many touchdown runs via that. And yet uh, it was a fake where Williams went up the middle and uh, put himself into third and short. A field goal keeps it a two possession game, but a touchdown will put this one well out of reach. Third and two from the seven. Pierce the motion man takes the handoff. A block from Franco cuts up field into the end zone for the touchdown. But a penalty marker back at the five. This one might come back again. Sure looks like it will. That looked like the flag thrown by the umpire, wasn't it? It was right in the teeth of where the play was developing. The ball spotted right now at the five yard line. Not sure why, Pierce scored. It is another huh. chop block against Smithson Valley, their second called against them tonight. Boy, and Coach Hill not happy about that call. And he is a good 20 yards onto the field. Goodness. And now our head official, Brock Pittman, comes over to talk to Coach Hill. As that flag wipes out a game-sealing touchdown. 
And now it's gone from a score to third down at about 15 from the 20 yard line. We don't do this often, but let me tell you what a great job of officiating Brock Pittman just did. He had a coach that was extremely irritated. Mm -hmm. He walked him back to the sideline while he was answering questions and having a conversation. He turned, Coach Hill went back after him and he walked him right back to the sideline again. So easy to throw a flag there on the coach. Right. He knew that was too important in a game like this. Good job of officiating by our head referee tonight. The Rangers have to reach the five yard line for a first down. Williams on the keeper, up the middle. A nice burst, but well short of the first down to the 12. However, much more makeable field goal now for Reed if the Rangers do send him out there. If not, it'd be about fourth down and seven. Also a much closer, if you go for it, player that, went down, which will mm -hmm. give the Rangers a chance to talk this one over without using a timeout. It's the quarterback, Levi Williams, by the way, who was down. If you recall, Williams left the game briefly last week against Judson, giving way to Colton Eilers in the second half. Eilers ran a few plays, threw a pass, completed it, and the Rangers' eventual 40-37 win. We did see Trevon Merrick Wooder go down to the game earlier, taking a shot below the waist. He did return. And in fact is looking at his quarterback right now. And again, the stadium goes eerily quiet. Oh, yes. The stadium would respond to this if it was anybody on the field, but now you're talking about the junior quarterback who has led this team to an 8-1 record on the cusp of 9-1 at a district championship with hopes of a long and fruitful playoff run ahead of them. And you'd think it'd have to be Williams leading them on that kind of run. So hopefully whatever is going on right now is not too serious. 4.21 to go fourth quarter. Rangers on top 16-7 as Williams has helped to his feet. This, though, not a good sign at being helped towards the sideline. Uh, he's putting no pressure on that left leg. That's right. He's trying to now. Yeah. And his foot is on the ground, but very slowly towards the sideline. And we will monitor that as close as we can moving forward. And again, the backup quarterback is Colton Eilers, a junior. Playing time limited this year. Only 12 pass attempts. Does have 135 yards passing and a touchdown. Meanwhile, the game situation, fourth and seven for Smith Valley at the Unicorn 12-yard line. Clock ticking now under four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. As Levi Williams makes his way to the training table and the Rangers spend their second timeout with 3.57 to go. Or their third and final timeout, beg your pardon. On top, 16 to seven. Once down in the game, seven to zip. Back of the first quarter, New Braunfels struck first. Again, the big play for the Unicorns. A 72 yard run by Ryan Redding. Take out that one play. And New Braunfels has less than 150 yards of offense in this game tonight. <laughs> The, rain, the bottom line is, Tony, the Ranger defense will give them a shot to win any playoff game this year. I agree with you there, and it's uh, it's been something we've talked about all year that the, the program has put that defense in so many difficult positions this year, and they have come through on almost every one of them. And Williams held it off, still being looked at by the training staff, and a lot of eyes making the way right now to that side of the – Rangers sideline. So the Rangers will forego the field goal attempt. Here is Eilers on the offense from the 12. He will throw it towards the end zone. Back shoulder attempt for Ray ball Falls incomplete. Broke it up by Saucedo. And New Braunfels gets a turnover on downs with 3.52 to go in the game. 
And the Rangers on top by nine. Unicorns take over on, on downs. And by the way, I know the result not there, but not a bad throw by Eilers. No, not a bad throw, and really, Radovan had a chance. Defensive back just made a nice play to make it difficult. And now first and 10 from the 12-yard line. For Redding of the offense, they go to work. It is a run. No, play action and a drop on the pass to the far side. Incomplete for the tight end, Zach Alamon. Second and 10. And again, not sure if you're down by nine with 3.47 to go, backed up at your own 12-yard line, who's going to bite on a play action? You know, it, it's funny, though. That was almost one of those run-pass options that you see running quarterbacks get. Right. We, we haven't seen many of those tonight. Not really. We haven't seen him ride a running back to the line of scrimmage and then pull back and, and throw a pass. He's been mostly one or the other definitively. You make Redding one-dimensional. He struggles. And a passing situation here. Steps up to throw. Flushed out and runs out. Forced out by Gibbons at around the 15. Good for three. Stops the clock. 3.40 to go. The Braffles down 16-7. to seven, And their season, no matter how the game finishes, winding down. If this is a one-possession game, there's a lot of time on the clock. Mm -hmm. In a two-possession game, it makes this drive so critical yes. that it happens in a hurry. And right now, they're struggling to get their first first down. The Braffles has to go 85 yards to score. That'll take a lot of time, barring a home run play. And then you got to get the ball back and score again. Here's a blitz on third down, and Rudding brought down. Back at the 10-yard line, C.J. Keeler. He has been a nightmare for opposing quarterbacks all year long. A sack back at the 11, and it brings up fourth down and long. Really, what can you say? This defensive line, they, they've all made plays tonight. Uh, pow Pow, Elliott, uh, Keeler. Richard Flores. I mean, yeah. Richard Flores. I mean, this has been a spectacular play by everyone that's played on the defensive line tonight. The Bruffles going for it, down by nine, three minutes to go. On fourth and 12. Redding pressured again, going deep over the middle, incomplete. Looking for Dulaban, overshot him, and the Ranger defense forces a four and out turnover on downs, ball back to the offense. And that should ice the game. Dulabon's the one, one of the receivers that we know can go up and get a ball, but he's going up against Woodard, who's going to TCU. <laughs> you know, just on athlete versus athlete, I think Woodard has the advantage. And again, the training staff still looking yes. at Levi Williams in the sidelines. Might be a silver lining to report that he's not been taken back to the locker rooms. As Eilers comes out with the offense. And now the 27-6-8 title. Just three minutes away from coming back to Swiston Valley. Here's a run for Franco on first down. And muscles up to the five-yard line for a good six-yard run. Second down and four. Now punching it in will just be icing on the cake. Should be. You look back through this district season for Smithson Valley, you mentioned the heavyweights earlier. The Rangers are one of them. So of the three heavyweight opponents they play this year, they've gone two and one. Wins over Judson last week, number one ranked team of the states. Steele, one of the great powerhouses statewide. Ergo playing in the state championship game. Rangers knocked them off 43 to 20. A run for Franco here on second down and dropped it around the three after a two-yard pickup. Two minutes to go now. Rangers on top by nine, and the other game, a loss to a really stout Clemens defense. 16-10 a Buffalo win. But, Tony, I wonder about the Buffaloes, and while defensively, again, they'll have a shot to win any playoff game. Can they do anything on offense? That is a big question as they go into that round. Third and two. Eilers nearly got the unicorns to jump, and he did. This will be a half the distance penalty. Not sure if it will be enough to give the Rangers a first down. And let's see where they spot the ball. 
right at the two-yard line and just short of the yard gain. Again, Clemens, 13 points last night. Not enough to beat Steele on a 14-13 loss last week against the Braunfels. The offense only scored 10, completed one pass, but enough to win the game. Third and less to the yard. Run for Franco up the middle and powers into the end zone for the touchdown for Franco, his second this year. And the Rangers on top now, 22 to seven, with a minute 14 to go. And Smithson Valley's second half is very good. You know, we talked about the first couple of drives, how hard New Braunfels' defense was hitting the Rangers. Right now, the Rangers are hitting much harder back, and that's been a difference in the game, I think, since the opening opening quarter. Half of the PAT read that kick is good. Still technically a two-possession game, but minute 14 left, two touchdowns, two two-point conversions needed. Probably too much to ask of New Braunfels at this point. So their season, Tony, will end at six and four. And again, just, just tough to be in this 27-6A league. A lot of teams will be looking at realignment closely, maybe no program more closely than New Braunfels. You know, you wonder, there's all kinds, to me, there's all kinds of programs like them in this vicinity that wish they were somewhere else. Yeah. Do they go to the Buda Hayes and, and, and that just San Marcos and go up that way? Probably would be better for them, without a doubt, in so many realms. You know, and as bad as this district is for them for football, it's just as bad for basketball. Sure, when yeah. When you're going up against the Judsons and the Clemens and, mm -hmm. and those programs that win continuously, steal. Yes. You know, they, they, they produce teams in, in every sport uh, that are excellent. It's a good baseball district as yeah, well. Softball, is. really strong. Volleyball, very competitive. Yes. Yeah. Here's a kickoff from Rita Squibb, picked up with a 27. And that is Fain on the return. Check that. Zachary Yaws taking it out to the 37-yard line. First intended Broadfuls with 68 seconds to go in the regular season. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, why do you squib it there? And the simple reason is more clock runs off. Yep. It's, you know, they, they get a better return because they haven't really had any kind of a return. Uh, but the clock starts moving when the ball is touched. Now it shouldn't be no more than uh, three plays unless somebody goes out of bounds before this one's over. And still keeping an eye on Levi Williams on the sideline. As DuBronfels will send it as backup quarterback and a quick completion out to the 46-yard line. Good catch out in space on the catch there for DuBronfels was Garrett Fleming. And the quarterback now, Trey Johns, for the Unicorns. So the career wrapping up now for Ryan Redding. And in that career, over 5,000 total yards of offense and explosive player for three seasons in New Braunfels. Thirty seconds to go, and Johns will keep it himself, and he will spin out of a tackle and drop down to the 47-yard line, make it the 48. And let's see the Braunfels will run the hurry up. If they don't, that might have been the game's final play. They send another play in from the sideline, which should mean they probably won't have a chance to get this one off. They break the huddle with five seconds to go, and Johns, not in a hurry, will not get the snap, and that will do it. Your 27-68 champions reside in Spring Branch. Smithson Valley, a 23-7 winner to cap off a 9-1 regular season. And the only thing you can think about right now as you get ready for the playoffs is, is your quarterback going to be healthy as he walks onto the field on crutches. Again, the final score from Ranger Stadium, Smithson Valley 23, New Braunfels 7. Back to wrap things up on the Rangers Network, this is Smithson Valley Football. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Comal Independent School District, HEB, GVTC, WIC Productions, 
Ferris Orthodontics, Summer Hill Dental, Smoky Moe's Barbecue, and Pizza Hut. We just got the GVTC Connect Home with Sky Bell. Wow, you can see who's at your front door. Who is that? Hello, Mr. Mueller, it's Marty from GVTC. That's Mason Pierce, senior wide receiver and defensive back for the Rangers. No, just Marty, making sure everything's working, video doorbell, remote arming and disarming of your alarm, and you're getting text messages when windows or doors are opened. Marty, watch this. R-A-N-G-E-R-S, Rangers, Rangers. The best. I mean, the best security on the planet. Just press enter and your GBTC home home yard will record your show automatically. Thanks, Doug from GBTC, who looks exactly like Ranger Senior CJ Keeler. I'm just Doug, here to help. Fumble! Here you go. Can I help you set up your favorite channel list now? And welcome back to Ranger Stadium with the, one of the toughest district championships to win in this state is 27-6A. But the Rangers have done that as they finish district play with a record of 6-1. Only blemish a 16-10 loss to Clemens three weeks ago. Capping off their district title with a win over the Bronfels tonight, 23-7. And welcome back here at Smithson Valley. Brent Freeman with Tony Brubaker to wrap up our broadcast and the regular season. And uh, Tony, not pretty at all times tonight, but the Rangers defensively, again, looked really good. And there's so many guys we talked about at the end of the game, the defensive line, which seemed to make so many plays tonight. Uh, Zuber, uh, Keeler, you know, all the guys that, that we've talked about all year. The secondary, I thought, played really well through most of the game. Uh, other than the 172-yard run, by Redding where we missed some tackles. Mm -hmm. um, our defense didn't allow their offense to get in sync tonight, and that's a really good thing because their offense has put up a lot of points this year. Now, certainly, Tony, a bittersweet win because towards the end of the game, a scary moment with quarterback Levi Williams going down. Initially didn't put any weight on his left leg coming towards the sideline. Appeared to try to do that as he made his way to the training table. He eventually did, you know, take his jersey off, his pads off, and join his teammates in the post-game celebration, albeit got out there on crutches. Again, far too early to speculate anything about Williams' future moving forward, but we'll definitely be keeping track of that in the days uh, to come leading up to the playoff opener next week. The Rangers are a great football program and have been under Larry Hill, and they will continue to play well no matter who plays quarterback next week. Obviously, Ranger fans and Ranger coaches and Ranger parents and Ranger players all want that to be Levi Williams, but we don't know right now. And it would be silly for us to speculate what his chances to play next week would be. Uh, let's just suffice to say the Rangers will show up next week, next Friday night here, and be ready to play a first-round playoff game. And again, coming into the night, there, the speculation was, or the scenarios rather, were who would the Rangers play in the opening round? Would it be either Brandeis or Jay, the winner of that game, Smithson Valley would play, and that game will take place here at Ranger Stadium next week. Looking for updates on that game, we have yet to receive anything officially uh, from Brandeis and Jay, but again, that game will take place no matter who the opponent is next Friday here at Ranger Stadium. And by the way, for you Ranger fans out there, if you're planning on attending the playoff game and currently hold season tickets, you will have a chance to purchase your seats for the playoff game this coming Tuesday, November the 14th at 7.30 in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon on November the 14th this Tuesday at the Fieldhouse. Remaining reserve seats and general admission tickets will be sold Thursday, November the 16th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Fieldhouse. So again, take note of that and... Uh, for, for any and all updates on Smithson Valley football, again, navigate online on rangersnetwork.com. And, Tony, we'll see you in the playoffs. We will do indeed. 
Rangers against either Brandeis or Jay next week, 7.30 right here from Ranger Stadium. And that will do it for our coverage of the season finale tonight. From Smith Valley, your final score again, Rangers 23, Unicorn 7. On behalf of our entire Rangers Network crew, I'm Brant Freeman saying good night.